What's up, Vola Monkeys? Welcome to the official Navy Federal Credit Union uh, mashup video. This is every single video that we've published on the channel to date, all in one video. So steal this, bookmark it, uh, download it, share it, do whatever you gotta do, right? But if you've got an app spree coming up in 2023, or you've got, you know, you need a refresher on Navy Fed, this is the playlist to listen to, man. We've covered everything into some areas where maybe we shouldn't have covered. And so we definitely got some blowback through 2022 from them or somebody from their end uh, on maybe some of the stuff that we were covering. But uh, Navy Fed, just to talk for a second about 2023 and what to expect, I really don't think anything's gonna change there. They are the number one credit union in the United States on every single top list, a banking top list that we found. Unless they're overstretched and haven't told anybody or they're lying or their books are wrong or there's a huge amount of losses that you know somehow come in that are bigger than 2008 lo uh, losses or bigger than you know all the other micro recessions that we've had, as long as it's not bigger than that, then I think Navy Fed should be just fine. Now, during the pandemic, we saw that they cut credit limit increases from 8,000 to 4,000. So maybe if the economy tightens up, you might see them dropping uh, how much they allow with a credit limit increase, but we still got three cards, maximum exposure of $80,000. I don't really expect much to change there personally and optimistically, I hope it goes up. I hope maybe not necessarily a fourth card, but let's bring that up to maybe 100K or 120K. Um, I'd love to see that. But outside of that, again, I, I don't really think anything's gonna change. You know, very, very strong bank. And uh, as long as something economically doesn't completely, you know, the whole thing, uh, fall off the wheels, uh, I think we should be just fine with that. So they also too don't really make changes with their pre-qualification process. You have to already have a membership. The pre -qual is up all the time. I've actually never seen them pull it down in multiple years now. So like I said, I'm not really expecting much to change in 2023. That being said, we'll obviously continue to cover it through this year, but I think you'll be safe if you want a deep dive to watch this whole video and you'll be light years ahead of everybody else. So I'm gonna shut up now. Let's go ahead and dive into the video. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. This is Wallet Monkey, where we cover everything that you need credit intel wise to build relationships with the banks and, of course, build your credit profile. Today, my friends, we are going to cover the elusive Navy Federal Credit Union, and I'm going to give you everything you need in one video. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk about 10 plus things that you need to know about Navy Federal. Look at all these videos that exist, basically telling you all the same stuff that I'm gonna tell you in this video today. The reason why is because I'm a huge proponent of data mining, meaning that we are building upon and further syndicating material, right? Through personal experience, through other people's experience, so on and so forth. So the issue is that there's just way too many videos right now about Navy Federal. Now, if you wanna go and talk and get specific videos about the secured card, the flagship card, etc., that's a different topic. But if we're gonna talk about just like uh, Navy Federal in general, how to get in, um, the late night approval hack, and, and all of these pieces here that uh, the 91.3 rule, all those pieces, then this is the video for you. So we're gonna cover all of that. And we We've got that broken down in an article uh, on the site as well. Of course, it's free, no gimmicks, pop-ups, no crap. It loads fast. It's simple, right? That's what we want. So first and foremost, let's cover the basics. Qualifying for a Navy Federal account. You can join online or call. And here is the current requirements with a couple caveats. So everyone already kind of knows, like, look, active duty retired veteran. Uh, immediate family members can get in. But what you might not know, and the, and the first little tip I want to give you, is household members can also become Navy Federal members. And up until this point, even though this will probably change, and I'm saying something that a lot of people have said as well, is that they haven't really been the best with documenting paperwork. They seem to be a little bit messy with how they do stuff on, on their end, which is fine. You know, it's not it's not a dig or anything, but definitely, you know, like their, some of their um, systems and, and whatnot need to be further optimized. Case in point is the late night approval hack, which we'll talk about as well. But if you can prove that uh, this roommate uh, provides uh, some a substantial amount to the, the household, then they can become a member. Okay, another little tricky one here is that they also allow in uh, select employee groups, SEGs, such as NASCO and BAE systems and several others. This is not listed on their website. You have to either go in or call them to figure out, to find out details about this. So it is beyond a little bit of beyond what I think is being talked about and being spread around. Okay, so that's the first big thing that I wanted to cover. Next, let's talk about uh, data points. This is where we get into all of the granular points that really make the biggest difference with Navy Fed. Let's start at the top. DTI is what they care about the most. 
This I don't really see changing. Um, Navy Fed also has its own internal credit score system, which we'll talk about. We'll talk about where to find that, how to find it as well. But the DTI is a big important factor for them. Pretty standard across the board in the mortgage industry, Navy Fed included, 43% or less is kind of the standard for them to be okay with, with giving you a mortgage. And then with lenders in general, ideally they like to see a debt to income ratio lower than 36%. So on the mortgage side, it's 43% or lower. So this is a percentage number, this debt to income ratio. And on the uh, lender side, they like to see 36% or lower. I don't really know what exactly Navy Federal is, but we can get some more insight in terms of uh, how they're ranking us with the internal credit score, which we'll cover as well. Next is the 91-3 rule, or since the pandemic and since a lot of stuff has been delayed, now is the 95 day rule, which is essentially, and uh, well, not a brand new account, but a brand new credit card, and you wait 91 days or three statements, and then you ask for a credit limit increase, and you can also get a second card. Keep in mind that you can only get three cards with Navy Federal, and they can be duplicate cards, so you could get three flagship cards if you wanted to, which is a minimum of 5K, all the way up to a maximum of 80K. But with the recent you know, COVID and, and whatnot, expect it to be at least 95 days, which you could call it 100 days if you really wanted to, just to be super safe, right? That rule, which again, that's another piece of commonly touted knowledge, right? But now let's get into some other stuff that might not be. And I'm gonna kind of buckshot these out at you as they're just bullet points in this uh, article. So currently, they will pull TransUnion 9 for everything except credit limit increases, but they've been known to pull uh, Equifax 9 as well. Credit limit increases uh, requests use Equifax 9. Okay, the membership to get a checking account is a soft pull. It'll be through check systems. If you haven't checked in on your check systems, we shot an entire video about it. You might wanna check into that. Uh, but if you call in for really any reason, you call in for a credit limit increase, you call in for you know a new product, whatever, they expect them to do a hard pull. This is true for most banks when you call in that they will do a hard pull. Whereas maybe online, maybe a prequal online or something like that, you might be able to get around it. If denied on an application, they can possibly reuse the hard pull within 30 days. If the computer can match your new application with the previous application. I already talked about uh, allows street cards maximum. Okay, maximum initial credit line is 25,000 without proof of income. 50K maximum, flagship is obviously the caveat to this, which is a minimum credit limit of 5,000 and a maximum of 80,000, which I already mentioned. New cards can be applied for at least 91 by three after the last one. 180 days between credit limit increases if the last one was approved. Otherwise, probably wait six months. And of course, between these, if you're getting denied, make sure the credit report looks different. Make sure you bring down your DTI. Make sure you bring down your utilization. Okay, next, um, you can do a product change, which I totally suggest. This is something I'm fairly new at myself, but you can get into doing product changes, which makes total sense from a strategy standpoint. If we're looking to maximize the three cards that we can get, we can combine, we can do product changes, we can uh, merge these together, right? Next is you can fund a brand new Navy Federal checking account with a credit card up to from what I've heard $250 so most people didn't realize you could do that next is and this is not on the list but if you do uh, want to get into Navy Fed ecosystem and you're brand new to it put money in both the checking and the savings account right so I think the minimum is like five dollars on the checking or on the savings and a hundred dollars in the checking do at least the minimums but you know put a hundred in each or a couple hundred in each just so that it looks good if you can get some sort of direct deposit flowing to Navy Federal or a portion of your direct deposit I know some companies will let you do partials do that because what they want to see is instead of pulling your credit to see if you can afford stuff or asking for uh, POI they're just gonna see oh well this guy guy's getting you know two thousand dollars every month as a direct deposit well now they don't have to hard pull so much now they can you know kind of use that data point to help them one your internal score uh, is going to be better with navy fed because how you're utilizing your accounts how you take care of your checking accounts how much money you have coming in that is all going to help you with your internal credit score okay current maximum credit limit increase right now during the pandemic is just four thousand we've heard this across the boards okay so don't expect more so those big crazy credit limit increases those are gone for now. Next, and this is something that uh, there's literally threads and threads and threads of this. If you're eligible for both a new card and a credit limit increase, apply for the new card first. If you don't and you apply for the credit limit increase, it will only take away from the limit that they will give you on the brand new credit card because you will hit like basically a maximum for what they feel safe and confident with uh, lending you at that time based on your internal credit score with them. So don't go getting the credit limit increase first get the new card, then get the credit limit increase. 
Next, let's dive in. If that wasn't enough, let's dive into the late night hack. Keep in mind that this is essentially an exploit and I've called it that because it's not something that they planned on doing and at some point they will stop doing this. So don't just think that this is gonna stick around forever. Don't think that this is guaranteed. It's not. I assume that they will fix this at some point. What it basically is, is that at certain hours of the night, office is closed, obviously, right? Well, there's no one, there's no human people doing any sort of a review process on applications coming through and there's an automated system. And apparently the automated system isn't that great. So your likelihood and your odds of getting approved with lower uh, credit, uh, with lower credit scores or less than ideal credit profiles is much greater. Those hours, I don't care what you've read about, the hours are 11 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is the late night hack right there. Submit your app at night during those hours and your likelihood of getting approved is a lot higher. Now, is it guaranteed? No. There's also some other things that really seemed to matter based on firsthand experiences with this. Okay. Sign up for, here's here's the, the way to maximize your odds right here, these bullet points. Okay, sign up for your new Navy Federal account. Everyone's required to set up both checking and savings, as I mentioned, fund both, and keep in mind that you can uh, fund with a credit card up to $250. Okay, give it time, 60 to 90 days. Make sure that the addresses match, like the address on the checking account matches the address on the credit profile, on your credit profile. You're not planning on doing a big move. Make sure that all the information that you submit to them for the utility bill, etc., to set up the checking account, make sure it all matches because otherwise what might happen is you might get delayed or put into a queue because addresses aren't matching and they're not able to actually fully approve your account. And so you want everything to be consistent, right? So do you setting up direct uh, deposits help because they want to see that consistency, consistent money coming in. This should be obvious, right? Uh, if you are 740 or below, stick to platinum card, go rewards or more rewards. And if you are 740 and above, go with the top two, the top tiers, which is flagship and Amex. If you get denied or get a low limit, you can use the reconsideration lines uh, and ask them to look at it again. This is on the back of the card or the 800 number can get you in there too. So the generic number can get you in there. And the cool thing is that most of the time you're talking to a real person in the United States uh, and that's the beauty of it. But they seem to be very um, just like upfront and honest. Like they're not really trying to hide anything. Like there's some sort of proprietary process or anything. That's been my personal experience. Uh, use the pre-qualified tool. Navy Federal offers you. It seems to be very, very accurate with if you're going to get it or not. Right. Next. And the big one that everyone's going to be asking about is how do you find your internal credit score? Now I've been waiting to get, maybe I'll have it in this video uh, by the time. Uh, by the time this is edited and uploaded. If there is, we'll go ahead and put those on the screen now. But basically, when you get approved or denied uh, for a credit card or a credit limit increase, on that one pager that they send out, at the top of the back of the, the first page or the main page that they send, there will be the breakdown of their internal credit score, the Navy Federal Internal Credit Score. And it is a score between 100 and 450. I think the last time I did mine, it was like 240 or 250, I wanna say. And what it's based on is it's based on how you manage your checking account. Overdrafts will obviously matter on this. You know, how much is, you know, probably I'm sure how much is in your accounts total. Direct deposit is activated, yes or no. How much, you know, it's categorizing you that way. That's what they're using to, if they can't maybe pull a hard credit report, they're gonna pull off their internal system, right? So I think their internal system as time goes on and as they grow this will matter more than your credit report at the bureaus, right? So I just gave you some things that you might be able to see there. Some examples here, number of inquiries on your credit bureau report you might see on there, balance status of uh, Navy Federal accounts might be on there. So again, if, if you're abusing these accounts, if you're getting non-sufficient funds fees and extended non-sufficient funds fees, then expect your credit score, to, uh, your internal credit score to be very low. Length of Navy Fed membership can actually come into play. This is why we want to follow these things here for the best likelihood and highest likelihood of not only getting approved, but the best rates, the best APRs, right? So this is how you find it. It's on the back of that one pager that they send out. Nobody really looks at the back. It's crazy because it's like um, six or seven boxes. It tells you exactly what it is, what your score is, the reasons why are the things that are affecting it, just like a regular credit report would do. All right, so last thing I wanna talk about is really the, the ranking and the tier system of Navy Federal cards, and we'll wrap it up there. Starting at the very beginning is the secured credit card. Now, here's the beauties of it, is at six months, they're gonna 
start to look at you monthly uh, or on a regular basis. It might even be, you know, sooner than that to graduate you into an unsecured card. So they would graduate you if you were approved into a uh, cash rewards unsecured. So this is a card that graduates. This is a card that is worth putting your time into. This is an ecosystem that if you like it is worth putting in time into. They've got a ton of different products. They've got loan products. They've got home loan products. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars from the personal side as well as the business side. They are um, they are a very good bank to get involved in, right? And it comes with a lot of other perks. No annual fees, no balance transfers, no foreign transaction fees. I mean, that's great. One X points per $1 spent on net purchases. Next, we got mid-tier cards. I just put all these together and I, I basically put them in order for how I feel is we got the cash rewards, which I put at the bottom only because you get more rewards with the go rewards. And I put the platinum above it because it's used for a balance transfer card. So it's the lowest APR. You might actually be able to qualify for a really low APR or close to zero for 12 months. With that being such a low APR, you can use it and leverage it as a balance transfer or a means to start a business and grab some money off of that card and then go and, and set up your entity and go and pull money from that to you know start up your actual business. And then the top tier cards, uh, flagship is at the top of that. Actually, these are out of order. Yes, I, just because I don't think you can get as much on the limit of the uh, more rewards. And definitely it's, it's co-branded through American Express, so it is a harder card to get. You get better bonus points here, but I like the flagship because uh, it's a minimum of 5K and you can get up to $80,000. I'm actually not sure what we can max out the more rewards card with. But there you have it. There's other stuff I wanna cover. We're gonna actually build out this article as we do with all articles on the site to cover the pledge loans and dive into business credit and business credit cards. And so expect this article like most on the site to uh, grow, but there you go. This video right here in 16 minutes, we've literally covered everything that you could find up-to-date information about all these common things that are being discussed around Navy Federal and what you can do right now to improve your odds, and get the best chance of approval, best APRs, credit limit, etc. Uh, today we're going to talk about Navy Federal Credit Union relationship building, meaning how do you best get in there, what do you do, how do you do it, all that fun stuff, right? So we're going to talk through some scenarios. We're going to talk through basically a ton of personal experience and uh, what we're you know what we're learning from the community with our our head to the ground here and what we're we're starting to figure out and uh, kind of piece together is is almost the system as much as I hate to say that. So if you haven't already, head on over to Wallet Monkey. Here it is on the screen. Wallet Monkey IO definitive guide to Navy Federal Credit Union and boom, this has got, oh my God, it's got so much stuff. Look at, look at what we're talking about here. All right, if eligible for a new card and a credit limit increase at the same time, apply for the new card first, then the CLI because otherwise you could cap yourself off uh, with their internal scoring system and how much they're gonna risk on you uh, as well as, look at all this. 181 days between CLIs if approved on the last one. We explained the 91.3 rule. We explain the maximum amount of credit exposure or risk that they're willing to take with each person. All that, right? And so what we're gonna be talking about is not the late night hack, even though I got the first person the other day so that it didn't work. I had no, they gave me no details though. But outside of that, I think just about everybody else is, th is saying that it's still working. Remember that your credit profile will matter. It's not gonna work for everybody. It's not as proven science or anything like that. It's just something that works a lot. And again, it's been in a video now for like three months. So does it still work? I mean, are they gonna change it eventually? Are they gonna plug the hole? Maybe. So it's like, you've had a lot of time to use that. Uh, don't be surprised if it does go away, right? So anyways, let's jump back into it. So how do you do this, right? Well, first off, you gotta open your account. And you gotta open your account, you open a checking, and they make you fund a savings account. This is pretty standard practice for a credit union. If you've never worked with a credit union, you gotta get a checking account and a savings account. You put five bucks in both if you wanted to to open it up, but take $100, put five in the savings account, and put some in a checking account, right? Next, the thing that we need to show them right out of the gates is you want to move over at least one or your primary direct deposit to Navy Fed. Now, again, this starts to become tricky if you've only got one job and you've got one direct deposit, where do we put it? Because there's all these fintechs, there's all these credit unions, there's all this bank stuff like, where are we putting our direct deposits? You can get multiple direct deposits done at some employers if they'll allow it. So you could slice out a thousand, send it here, slice out a thousand, send it there, right? Otherwise, you're gonna have to kind of do a temporary rerouting of your stuff if you really wanna take this serious and grow this, th that is, right? and you're gonna have to put it here in the Navy Fed. So you gotta have some sort of consistent direct deposit slash ACH happening into the personal checking account. The reason why 
is because they are huge about relationship. They have an internal scoring mechanism. So does Amex. We know for sure right now at this point that both Amex and um, Navy Fed, their internal score matters more than your credit score. Let me say that again. We know now that with Navy Fed and Amex, your internal score matters more than your credit score. So they are relationship based. You're going to get more if you've used and utilized your assets, let's call them more so, with them. How do we do that? First thing is get that transactional history. And this is true for the business side. In fact, if you have the capabilities or the capacity to do so, when you open up the um, personal side, now get into the business side. So what's required there is you gotta pay a membership fee. I think it's still like 99 or $100. You pay that and you gotta do the same thing. You get set up with a, a checking account on the business side. And so get that set up if you can right out of the gates and then try and set up again, weekly deposits into the business account. So now we're growing two things. We got our monthly wages going into the personal account. And even if you're pulling money out of the personal account or somehow dripping it back into, maybe you're going into making these deposits, uh, it doesn't really matter how, or you've got some sort of ACH funneled into the business account, whether it's a Stripe, a PayPal, something like that, and it's got a business name on it, we want to have that funneled in. Actually, I don't even think it needs a business name on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm backstepping a second here. Is we, we just need some sort of ACH, which could be a Stripe, PayPal, et cetera, or some sort of weekly deposit into your Navy Fed business account. Because again, it's about transactions, right? And so here's what that allows you to do. Here's an example of that is, I think it was three or four months set up with Navy Fed, had primary, used it as primary checking, primary checks were coming in, right? So monthly wages were coming in there. Three or four months later, go to open up the business account. You gotta have your articles of incorporation. You gotta have your S4 letter, uh, maybe your A4 letter. No, I think it's S4 letter, something like that. It's basically the one you get from the IRS with your EIN. You need your EIN number. You don't need a DUNS. I don't believe you do, that might've changed. And you need full address, phone number, all the fun stuff with business, right? Which we're gonna cover in a, in a business video, everything that you need. And got set up and got approved for a $5,000 business card right there on the spot on a brand new business. So this is why it's like, you got the whole vendor building thing on the business side. Yes, there's also a ton of these loopholes that maybe we'll shoot a video at some point after we've laid out all the vendor lists and the tier one stuff and all the basics. After that, I wanna shoot a video where we talk about like, okay, now that we've shown you this, here's all the things that you can do to like make that not true. So here's, here's all the loopholes for to get around that. And one of those loopholes is going and build the relationship with Navy Fed on the personal side, and they will give you decent limits on a brand new EIN. Like that's not bad. Brand new, no history, no nothing. And you just tell them it's brand new. You don't lie or try to make shit up. You just tell them it's brand new. And then, you know, they give you a decent size limit. I think five $5,000 is a decent limit for a brand new card. It was the uh, cash rewards, the green card. Okay, so yeah, they work off the internal scoring system. So here's a look at that, because I know with some of this stuff, you don't really have this number. You don't have an internal credit score number on some of these institutions. Well, with Navy Federal, you do. Here's an actual example of what it could look like. It might look different. It's usually on the back of a rejection letter. Uh, I think it might be on the back of an, ex I don't think you get an acceptance letter, but it could be on the back of other pieces of material that they send out to you, I'm not sure. Uh, this is what, what I've seen it on, is on the back of a uh, of a rejection letter. And I think it was for a credit limit increase. But yeah, if you go and get a card and get denied, well, it's gonna tell you the score. So the score is between 100 and 450 on the internal score. So 250, 300 is like right there in the middle, yeah? All right, so you'll see things like number of inquiries, uh, balance status at Navy Federal accounts, length of Navy Fed membership. So again, starting to see all this matters. And it becomes harder to, it becomes harder for them to give you more money and extend ex more exposure to you when you don't have these accounts, when you don't have direct deposit hitting, when you're not using these accounts like that, right? So there is an internal maximum exposure limit that they're willing to go to. Now, here's where it starts to get a little bit muddy in terms of where or how much. The max internal credit exposure the Navy Fed will do per customer is 180,000. We got this information a couple months back. We actually called in, just call in and ask them. They'll tell you. Now, the only confusing thing is if we were to get three flagships and the credit lines there max out at 80,000, that's 240. Do you actually get that or does it max you out at 180? I don't know. I mean, does it really matter at that point? You're doing pretty good. 
uh, with if you get three flagships. That'd be incredible, right? Three flagship uh, credit cards. So anyways, they do have a maximum exposure limit. They've admitted that, right? That's that's pretty common knowledge now at this point. So what you start to get is, and that's why it's so important to get the new card before you get the credit limit increase is because if you go get the credit limit increase and they give you a nice fat increase, you might get denied for the new card or the new card will get like a thousand dollar limit because once again, you're hitting your, you're hitting your maximum exposure at that time based off your variables. So they use the internal score and probably some other variables to determine what you get. And a lot of times if you go and get a credit limit increase and they give you like a $500 increase or a thousand dollar increase, I've seen this a ton of times too. And you email them and, and do a reconsideration line on them and, um, uh, and try and get them to increase it, they will just flat out tell you out like, look, you're maxed out at uh, what we can give you with your internal score. They will tell you that when you email them in, in the secure message portal within your Navy Fed login, or you call them, they'll tell you the same thing. So you can 100% hit your maximum threshold with them, right? And so it's all about trying to play that game of, you know, getting the most that we can out of everything as we're growing our usage and hopefully growing that relationship with them. They're growing their trust with us and our ability to be able to pay back on the debt. And you know, we're, we've got this beautiful thing going back and forth. The last thing I wanna talk about is the pledge loans. So the pledge loans are like another piece that is quickly becoming a vital component here. And so what that is, is that is a loan that's not advertised on the website. Like, oh, I don't have it pulled up, but it's not advertised on the website, but it is an option for existing members. And once you get these pledge loans, the, the game is, if you get this early on to it, it really, really helps get new credit cards and get higher limits. It's because again, it's showing what? It's showing me, the consumer, has opened up a loan with you, whether it's a thousand or $10,000. And then very quickly, I've paid that down within 10%. So there's now just a 10% balance, leave it open, leave it alone, because it's also like a backup fund in case you need it. And it shows them, wow, they just paid down a $10,000 loan. They just paid down a thousand dollar loan. Now, next time we go get that credit card, next time we go get that credit limit increase, it's more. It has to be. Because again, they're basing this off of their own internal ranking system, which which the, the backbone and foundation of that has to be is that how are they dealing with credit? How are they dealing with the debt, right? So anyways, that's a new piece that I think is quickly becoming really, really important. I don't see a ton of people talking about it, but yes, leverage the pledge loans, get them paid down within 10% of paying off as quick as possible. And then next round that you go back to get your credit limit increases, your second or third card, watch. Watch those limits on how good they're gonna start looking, right? Because you will be rewarded for that. So I think that's all I wanted to cover in this. We could get into some of the other loan products. There are a ton. There are some interesting backdoors for the business side too. I think we'll cap it there. This was a request from someone in the community. So Barbara, there you go. You're welcome. I hope this helps you. And if you guys have got any requests on videos you want us to shoot, comment below. But I think this pretty much wraps up a lot of those common questions that we get and gives you an idea of, of how to really leverage this. So comment below if you got questions or if you wanna suggest a future video or just to help out with the algorithms. And hit the like button. Again, it helps out uh, tremendously. Thank Today you. we're gonna cover the Navy Fed prepaid debit card. Oh, I can see your mind already turning, thinking about the credit churning. Yes, uh, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. This card is uh, pretty crazy actually because it is a prepaid debit card that allows you to fill it with a credit card. Let me say that one more time in case you're slow on the uptick. This is a debit card that allows you to fill it with a credit card up to $10,000, which I don't think there's another card that exists like this in the entire market. I think this is the only one. So total card load is $10,000. And the largest sale that you can make or point of sale limit is $3,000 a day. Let's talk about this now. Is prepaid debit card is usually good for those who, you know, they are new to the country or maybe still working on getting their citizenship or you know a plethora of other problems. Maybe they've got upside down bank accounts. Maybe they don't even have a bank account, right? That's usually what debit cards are used for. But there's another kind of gray area that exists, which allows you to be able to, let's call it for, for a nice way of putting it, repurpose credit card limits and uh, stagnant credit cards that maybe you don't want to use for th certain things, you can repurpose it and reuse it for something that can help you uh, grow. Now, this is controversial, what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, credit card churning, okay? Which is where we're essentially taking uh, credit off of a card 
and loading it up onto, you know, onto another asset or another card, in this case, a debit card, and then going and using that to either set up pledge loans or to set up uh, other credit cards, to set up uh, ACHs and direct deposit uh, for, you know, bank accounts to show, to get that history, that transactional history so that we can then get ourselves into position to get new cards. So this, this allows you, and this acts as really a building block so that you can take this, this, um, this money and use it for other things. Okay. So what I've heard is that they're in the process of kind of redoing this. They're going to, They've got a new chip card that they're going to be sending out. And if I've got the email or the letter uh, that one of our community members, shout out to the money, if he's gotten it to me in time, well, then you'll see it right now. And if not, well, then you won't see it. But just know that they're going to be redoing this and rolling out chip cards. So let's continue to talk about this because there's a couple other important aspects. So max withdrawal limit uh, per day is $600. But get this, you can add up to five card holders on this card and each one has their own separate funds. And so that means that they can actually have their own separate funding source. So if you did want to max this thing out, you could add up to five other Navy Fed members onto this account. You guys each load it with a credit card. Boom, there's a 10,000. And then whatever, you know, whatever you wanted to do with this. So what I, what I want to do is like take a step back here for a second is Usually those who do really good with credit cards, usually those who do really good with personal finance are creative. That's it. They're not smarter. They're not, you know, got some backdoor guy that they know at a bank or something, even though those things help. Uh, it's usually, it's those who are, are creative that do really, really well, right? Especially something like this. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at the Navy Fed site, through the Navy Fed site, and then to finally come across a gem like this, you're like, oh, wait a second, right? And so another aspect that they're going to be redoing is this whole um, app. So it'll have its own self-sustained app that you can have on your phone, which again, just makes this even more powerful, even more usable, right? It's having access to all of this on the go. So yes, you can max it out at 10,000. You can do a max purchase of $3,000, ATM $600 per day, add up to five other users to help you get to a higher limit or whatever your, your strategy and game plan is for all of you to be able to um, get money off of those maybe dead cards or just cards that you regularly use, but you want to use this stuff for something else. Well, here's your opportunity to do that. And uh, yeah, along the way, you can all track it uh, on the app. So each person would have, you know, essentially their own version of the app with the micro of their uh, funds and the macro of the total account balance to a degree. Um, I'm not sure how much access each person really gets on the app. I don't know. You'll have to find out for yourself, but pretty crazy. No monthly or activation fees. Yeah, we already covered the app. Um, and this is available to be used anywhere Visa debit cards are accepted. So you don't really have to worry about then trying to get the money back, the cash back off this card. You just then go and use this anywhere as a debit card. Make sense? So there's all kinds of new opportunities and little side hustles that you could start to do with this, with your credit game. So I'm going to I'm gonna leave it there. I'm going to let your brain do its thing and come up with different ideas and ways that you could utilize and maximize this. Today, what I wanted to share with you is a really simple four-step personal loan hustle or tactic that you can use, right? And I recently did this. I think it's really simple and a lot of fun to do, but also too will impact your score and set you up for your next round of app spree or game day strategy, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So this is a very simple, straightforward process. Let's dive into it now. If you like this, uh, as we're going through it, just show us some support, flick a like, toss a comment below. If you got something to add or you got a similar strategy, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, maybe we can do a stream together, you know, feature you in a video, whatever you want to do. Let us know in the comments though. All right, let's get started. Okay. Step one, number one is get a personal loan. Wide range. We've got a article on the site that actually ranks personal loans. Marcus Goldman is still one of my favorites. It's because the APR is usually really good and it tends to stay the same based on, you know, credit scores. If you're over 700, you're going to get something good. You're going to get 11, 12%, but personal loans range. I'd say, let's say to be generous, 10% up to, uh, you can get a 22 to 30% loan. It just depends on what kind of loan it is because there are subprime lenders for personal loans as well. So personal loans, understand that with FICO 10 and 10T that are slowly starting to get rolled out is 
Personal loans and how you treat those will matter more. Understand that anyone telling you that you can't get personal loans or shouldn't get personal loans anymore is wrong. What you shouldn't do as 10T and 10 continue to roll out is get a personal loan, pay down your credit cards, go max out your credit cards again. That's what will get you negative you know, demerits or negative mark on your credit from this new change in FICO. Okay, so we're gonna get that personal loan. We're gonna secure it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we are going to come to Navy Fed. We get a pledge loan and we take the entire personal loan, the entire amount, and we put it over here to a pledge loan. So you move it over into your savings account. Then you have to call them or go into a local branch and open up the pledge loan for the full amount of the personal loan. Good news is personal loans are usually pretty quick. 24 to 48 hours, it's in your account, right? I know that with Marcus and with some, if you dedicate the money right away for debt consolidation, they'll give you one or 2% APR off. So again, you gotta justify all this for yourself. This is just a strategy I'm sharing with you. If it works for you, great. If not, ignore it. Move it to a pledge loan. Then we're gonna pay off like, I don't know, you can choose I would say anything above 85%, pay it all off. Now pull the money back out because this whole process of like staking up the money. So I'm staking up the money. They're taking that to then open me up a pledge loan. So I could then go and use all that money. Instead, I'm going to pay off 90% of that pledge loan, then get my cash back, pull it out, then go pay off all my credit cards. And that is step number three. Uh, pay off debt. This is a fun little thing that I just did. And so, you know, again, I'm just sharing it with you. So we pay this down 90% and we take that and we pay these guys down. So now what's happened? What's happened is we've opened ourselves up for new credit, for an app spree. Okay, so because hopefully this whole number is big enough for this to all work, but if not, you're gonna be able to pay down quite a bit of your debt, I hope. Then give that uh, a month or two, maybe a statement date or two for that to kick in. And then what's gonna happen, and this is an old school trick of just taking a personal loan and paying down your debt, right? We all know this. But what's gonna happen is your score is gonna go up. Now, at first, because the personal loan, your score might drop up to 40 points for the first month, but doing this and this back to back, you can definitely expect 20 to 40 point drop. But what's gonna happen then is this has got time to work. So it's like we open this and it affects some components with our FICO score, right? Average age of account, depending on how some of this is counted, where you got the loan from, right? And then we're gonna pay down all of our debt, our revolving credit hopefully gets paid down quite a bit. And so we're dropping our utilization. So that's why you need like, I would even say almost three months to let this thing kind of shake out because you're gonna get a point drop and then you're gonna get a point bump when the statements start reporting that now you've got super low utilization. So this is a, a really great strategy to pay down your utilization, which we're all used to that, but we're sliding in this new piece, this pledge loan piece. Why does this matter? I don't know why people are still doubting this, but there's still a ton of people out there that don't think or don't understand that the Navy Fed internal score is completely separate and disconnected from your FICO score and from your credit score. It is an internal piece. The more products and the more business I do with Navy Fed, the better score they give me. Like that should be obvious. I don't know why that has to be explained, but if I go out and I put money into high yield savings account and I put money into this and I put money into that, I'm opening myself up to get more products, higher limits and build my relationship with Navy Fed. So this is a way to just build your relationship with Navy Fed at a much higher degree than you possibly could have, but you're also getting this, the side benefit of paying down all your debt as well. So now we can line ourselves up for an app spree. Now that let's cover the Navy Fed piece first and how I suggest you to do that. And if I'm missing anything, please let me know. At this point, Point, your internal score is higher. So we can go after your typical, get credit limit increase first on our existing cards, then open up that brand new card, see where we're at, right? We could make this a little bit better. Before we even start to do this entire thing, we could bump ourselves up to the flagship checking account, which is more money. I think they charge you like a, a monthly to leave it open, right? Because you're positioning yourself for the flagship, the monster, the 5K minimum up to $80,000 maximum credit card with them, the Mac Daddy, right? And do that first, then go through this process. So now our internal score is pumped up from multiple metrics, right? Let that sit and resonate, you know, until your score, you see that score start to bump up. So let's say two, three months. Then what we can do is we can go after line of credit product. We can go after personal loan. We can get on top of our credit card. So credit limit increase, new credit card, personal line of credit or personal loan. Then we could even go after car loan, you know, any HELOCs, ALOCs, things like that, right? So this is setting you up massively to uh, build and grow yourself within the Navy Fed ecosystem, but also too, you're knocking out all the rest of it. So it's just like, this is just icing on the cake. And this is just an additional simple step you could do because now the big thing here is that now you're in position to do an app spree because your score has been bumped up and hopefully, you know, a lot of other stuff has fallen off of your account at this point. So you're in good shape to, you know, go out and get some fresh new credit.
So anyways, very simple four-step personal loan hustle, I guess we'll call this for now. Um, but I'd love to hear different iterations you've done with this. I'm sure you've done similar or maybe you've got an idea of something that you would want to do similar. Share it in the comments below. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. And of course, join our free Discord. We've got two, 300 people in there now. Absolutely incredible. We are building a grassroots community. The whole intention here is to share, not come in and take, but to share, to contribute, to participate in this community so that you can get what you want, while also too, we're raising the level of education so that we can go out and again, help with that effect of rising all ships. You know, rising tide helps rise all ships, right? So the more education we all get, the more we all share together, we get smarter, we can go out, help more people after we help ourselves. So it's like, just like they say with the life mask on the airplane, you got to put it on yourself first before you put it on to somebody else. You know, save yourself essentially before trying to save somebody else. It's the same thing here. We got to make sure that everyone gets handled at a one to one level and then they can go out and help other people. We are going to cover a case study. Now, this is not definitive. This is uh, obviously you never know what you're going to get. Everybody's going to fare a little bit differently, but this is an internal score uh, building hustle. OK, this is something that we're going to actually start working on and, and try and nail down into way more specifics than we've got now. But we've got people in the community trying this going for it right now and have been what we've got is we've got a result that wanted to share this with you so let me move this over there we go okay like i said this is not like the the only way to do it this isn't like perfect i'm sure some of these steps could be moved aren't aren't necessary maybe if you did different dollar amounts that would change the outcome i have no idea i don't really care the proof of this is twofold one doing this actually bumped the fico 8 score by 31 points Two, they ended up getting a $25,000 Go Rewards Amex offer and took it using the late night hack. So this proves the internal score. This proves that they're relationship based in case you needed that. It wasn't you know, obviously clear at this point and shows you one person's journey along the way here to accomplish that. So this is seven months from start to finish, meaning brand new relationship to getting that offer. And I can tell you being with Navy Fed since 2019 and not really understanding these products and not really doing them in some sort of timely manner, I have not gotten a $25,000 pre-approval offer from for the Amex Go Rewards. So this clearly proves that this does bump up your internal score and two, that the internal score matters to, and it was worth building up, right? So anyways, let's dive into it here. And I got some screenshots to follow. So we got receipts in, in case that mattered, but really just to show how cool this is and, and the whole life cycle of it. Okay, so started brand new relationship in October of 2021. So the first thing it looks like changed was he swapped over to flagship checking, which if you wanna get the flagship card or have the opportunity to get that card, which is the one that starts at a minimum of 5,000, goes up to 50,000, then this is the one that you want, or it goes up to 80, I'm not really sure which. You, you can check the uh, definitive guide on the website. If you want to get an opportunity for that credit card, getting the flagship checking is a great way to do that. Okay. It's not free. You got to pay for it. It's worth it. Next, what happened was, and again, I don't have a perfect timing. So it started October. Maybe this is like November and this December. I don't know. But by January, we're here. So January, April, May stuff is really tight. This stuff, again, doesn't really, we don't have specifics. I don't think it matters. And then what happened was two Saver First accounts were added and two IRA certificates. You might not know what these are. So this is the page. You basically go to certificates and IRAs and then this is where you, you get dropped off. But there's a $50, you can start with as low as $50 for an IRA. And this is the Save First account. You can also do these as well. These were small amounts, guys. These weren't like hundreds of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars at all. These are 100, 500. The pledge loan was a thousand dollars so you can start pretty small with these but as you can see here we do have minimums on some of these accounts okay so the save first account was used and the IRA certificate was used and then a market account which I don't have details on that I don't think it matters okay so that happened next right building up internal score no real thought of like hey this is gonna bump my FICO didn't care just said hey I'm gonna I'm gonna go all in on trying to build up this internal score right okay January 2022 rolls around and we get another saver first account Account. So I don't know if these were just expiring and the, and the terms were were running out on these or if at that point he had three. Again, I don't even know if that matters. Got another certificate account. So now that's three possibly that are active or these expired and now it's just another one, another one. Added another checking account and opened up a market account, which I don't know what the minimum is on a market account. You can look that up for yourself, but there you go. Then it was at some point right after this that he started getting actual pre-approval offers which just like with Amex, have a high likelihood of being approved. 
So he got one for the Platinum, which is the low APR card, and then the Amex Go Rewards, right? Which is the Amex co-brand. Then uh, April, I think it was like April 15th-ish, does a 1K pledge loan, right? Pays it off, does the game, pays it off 93%. Then it reports, well, he takes the Go Rewards offer and gets approved for a 25K Amex. He was gardening during the time of doing all this, by the way. Had no intention of getting this. So it just tells you how sweet this is that it made him like jump ship um, and get this offer. All right, so here's the next one I wanted to show you. Just kind of proof that the score, you know, the FICO 8 did jump. Here's 31 points showing you right here on Experian. Bang, it was just like a straight rocket ship up. And it was at the point of this new installment loan being reported and 93% of it being paid off only a $75 balance. What you can then do is just set up however much money you need to put in the savings account and just set up auto payments onto auto payments of like a dollar per month to run it out for its full 18 months. Easy. Easy game on that. Here's just a quick look as of May 5th, right? 37 points on Equifax. He's in the 800 club now, guys. Had no expectation of getting into the 800 club. This is incredible. This is like top one percentile of Americans right here. This is insane. Plus 33 points on TransUnion, even though it's showing plus zero. So we got 31 to 37 point jump on FICO 8 from just that pledge loan. And here is the welcome from the Amex, bang, 9.65% APR, which is great APR to have. So there you have it. This is the journey. Now, I think a lot of this stuff is what we need to like really hone in on and we can get specific on, but I think you literally can make a formula that is pretty darn accurate for somebody just starting out. And I think it doesn't matter the credit score, 680s, low sevens, you can go through a similar journey and do the same thing. Maybe we just come out and do like a larger pledge loan in the beginning flagship checking upgrade, right? Maybe we just do a longer term certificate and make it a more amount. We do a couple savior accounts and make them bigger. I don't know. I don't know the specifics of this, but I know that it boils down to this. So the more activity and the more you are doing, the more you are rewarded within this system. And we know Amex does a internal scoring system as well, even though they haven't published it. So this is the future game. It's gonna be all soft pulls and then it's gonna be more relationship based. So there's gonna be a way into just like education. We start at low levels of education. We work ourselves up to advanced everything, right? It's gonna be the same thing here. You start yourself off at low level accounts, get yourself access to really basic cards and then grow into these in insane limit cards with tons of perks. Because, oh, the best part, he actually got all the signup bonuses on this Amex Go, which there's a lot of people who don't even realize that there's signup bonuses in Navy Federal at all. And he got all of them for this which I, I don't remember what it is in post. I'll have my editor put it up because I, I believe I got a screenshot of that uh, somewhere. So we'll put that up right now. Another key point here is that uh, he's got some sort of bi-weekly direct deposits happening on the account. And I think for the most part, like that's it. So uh, let me just do a, uh, a recap on other data points for you. A utilization was low, uh, 1%. Seven inquiries, no new accounts in 10 months. Cause again, he was, he's been gardening for 10 months and, and wasn't even planning on taking this card, but it was obviously a sweet card. So take it, right? No charge offs, no derogatories, no lates, no public records, 100,000 in open credit across 33 accounts. And I think that's about all you need to know on that. Is 3.5 to five years is about the average age of account on his profile. So there you go. And that's the full timeline, right? So if you've got questions about this, or if you want to share your story, I want to start sharing more stories like this to, for a couple different reasons is one, we have to get past this. Like, does the internal score, is it real? Does it work? Like, yes, it's real. Yes, it works. Like, come on guys, we got to get past that and start to actually share relevant information, facts, data that prove this and give you some sort of indication of how you could follow a similar journey and get these things done, right? If you've got a journey like this going on, I'd love to hear from you in the discord. There's, there's a ton more information too being shared about this story and everyone else's story in the discord for now it's free. We're keeping it small tight. We're going to start to add in barriers of entry because I want only the best in there because the strategies and stuff that's starting to be talked about in there, I want to keep under a tighter, I guess, lock and key or community, right? So anyways, you're free to join that for now. Um, at some point, we'll probably shut it down. You can get more details on this story as well as many, many others. We just had somebody recently flip from a $200 secured, six months on the dot, boom, they got uh, flipped into a 2000 cash rewards. It's the green card with Navy Fed, tons of other stories like that. It's all about education, my friends. Today, I wanted to cover another Navy Fed case study. 
Now, we've been talking and we did the previous video about the internal score and we covered one of the community members story, right? And it was it was complex and it had all these different certificates and, and different savings accounts and, and so on and so forth, right? And it, it was this big, long drawn out thing over like eight, 12 months. And immediately under that video, there's all kinds of people who maybe this was the only thing they did. Maybe there's other things they forgot. I don't know. But there's a bunch of people who said, hey, like some variation of, well, I just did this and I just did that. Understand that no matter what story I share with you, no matter what kind of case study we dive into, is that there's always going to be somebody who 18 year old kid with no credit who just walked up and got a 25K card. It's just how it goes because DTI is so important to Navy Fed. So anyways, I actually did a case study of, of my own recently and uh, I wanted to share that with you. So here it is. So here's kind of my journey with Navy Fed. I don't know how long of a time frame this is. I think this is from 2019 to 2022 and I don't have exact dates on when I did this. So it's it's just, just take it for, for a grain of salt, right? I guess is my point. So I got, originally got the 1K limit on the cash rewards. That's the green card. That's the easiest card to get. No previous relationship. It was done pretty cold and I don't remember my score at the time. Probably somewhere in the 680s. Okay, I was in the 680s for a long time. Barely used the checking savings account. I think I had $5 sitting in the savings account. Wasn't using the checking account for anything. Tried credit limit increase, you know, I followed all the rules, tried that, didn't work. Twice, on the second one, I finally sent them a message in the message portal, said, hey, reconsider, please. They said, oh, you're at the max, but we'll give you 1800. Cool. Then I started using a checking account and I started getting certain payments sent over. I think I was doing transfers from like Cash App or something, right? So some of my Cash App revenue, I was running through the checking account. I think like maybe two or $3,000 a month. I was doing this for, I don't know, three, four months. Then I go back, get a credit limit increase to 3,500. I said, huh, that's interesting. More and more people are sharing stories in the community at this point. So I said, okay, forget it. Let's do this. Let's go all in, right? I get a certificate account set up 50 bucks, throw it in there. And then I got some sort of savings account. I can't remember which one it was. Was. Um, there's not very many there. I think it was the high yield savings account. Put $65 in because I wanted to get three different transactions so that I could qualify for the bonus. So that's why I just put three $5 transactions. This bonus does not exist anymore. It ended. Okay. And then I did all that. And then I opened up a 10K pledge, paid it right back, did the 90% deal. It's just sitting there chilling. They don't want another payment until 2023. Okay. For the remaining balance. So just so you know, two months later, here we are, and the pledge loan is not reporting still to my credit. I know that when those new instruments or vehicles are proved to you, that will change your internal score. Understand that right now, I have no clue what my internal score is. Okay, if I get it, then I'll update this within the community and you know that'll be a more concrete set of data points. We can assume that changes that based off of my actions, changes occurred. As soon as I, because if looking over it, you can tell that as soon as I started using the checking account, that activated this, the a higher CLI than I was getting before, right? Safe to assume that. Then I add all these different things, right? The certificate, additional savings account, I do the pledge loan, and then I applied today for the more rewards, which is the Amex co-brand, and I got approved for 20K at 15%. So. Yes, this does work. And it doesn't have to be like this long drawn out thing. You know, I was gardening. I wasn't really taking it serious. You know, here we are, right? So then I, I buckled down and over the span of like three months, get serious. And this is the result. 20K, 15.24%, which is good. I mean, it's a great card. It's 3% on everything. Yeah, really, really good card. So it's accepted everywhere. American Express is accepted, which there's funky stuff like internationally, like a lot of your cards don't work, but Amex do, they do work. So I like that. Um, I like it for that purpose. And so, yeah, there's another case study for you. We are going to talk again about Navy Federal. We are going to do another case study. This time you guys asked for more specifics. You've been loving the series so far. So we're going to deliver and we got way more specifics, timelines, everything you could possibly imagine. This is going to be filled with goods. Now you're really cheating because you can see what's on the screen. It's important to note something about Navy Fed. Fun fact, on the WalletMonkey.io website, you will notice that it does not mention Navy Federal anywhere. You might be wondering, why is this? It used to. Well, this is because they went after our uh, hosting account and tried to take away our domain and take away our web hosting due to a faulty or mm, one might say borderline iffy trademark claim. So now we get to uh, involve ourselves into a legal battle, uh, which is no fun because we absolutely love Navy Federal. So. 
I have no clue what's going on there, but I figured I'd fill you in. I've got a dedicated video coming out on this soon. It is uh, laughable at best and pathetic at worst. So anyway, that is why on the website, we no longer mention Navy Federal. But if someone from Navy Federal is watching this, we love you. I love you. Maybe in miscommunication, maybe you guys don't even know that uh, somebody went after us. I don't know. We can get to the bottom of it, um, but probably better to just reach out and talk versus, you know, going for the jugular and going for the neck. Anyways, let's dive into it. 12 months, three cards, which is the max you can get. $79,000 in credit limit. Let's unpack a few things here. This, first off, this is extremely rare. Please understand this. The max you can get in credit card terms is three cards with Navy Federal. The max exposure limit or the maximum amount of money that they're willing to give out, which I know that this, this number was confusing for a while. People thought it was 80,000 a card. Is it 80,000 total? Reps were saying different things, wrong things. The total as we know it right now, according to enough people there, is 80,000 total. It was never more. We were just wrong, which is why we updated you know, our data and our information. So it was never 180 or 240K or whatever you're hearing out there. It was always $80,000 is the max exposure credit limit on the maximum of three credit cards. So again, this is extremely rare, especially to do this in 12 months is absolutely insane. And then secondly, I want you to pay attention to the rate at which these cards and the limits were given out is also pretty substantial. The 91.3 was followed for during this entire process for credit limit increases, for getting new cards. Credit limit increases were always gone after first before new cards, which is how you should do it. This is something we've stressed since the beginning. A common question that we get is, do you go and get the new card first or do you get the credit limit increase? Get the credit limit increase first, then go get the new card. Okay, so we've talked about all the other details in other videos, the 91.3, et cetera, et cetera. Let's dive in, shall we? Okay, card number one was the cash rewards. By far, the lowest barrier of entry card to start with. This is where most people start to get their card. This is also where an end rewards will go unsecured and push you into a cash rewards unsecured card. First card, $18,000 around July 10th. I have changed some of these dates. I'm not sharing all the data that was given to me. Believe me when I say that all the receipts were, were given to me and this is the best timeline example we've got because the they tracked all their information and they gave it to us with meticulous notes and they got screenshots and so everything was proven and vetted. So yeah, this is this is absolutely killer, but I'm not giving out the exact dates. I'm not giving out the, all the other um, pieces of data that uh, the receipts that uh, they gave me. So I'd, I'd rather just not do that. So again, I changed around some dates, but understand it was one year exactly from July the first card to July the third card. First card, cash rewards, 18,000. Second card came November 23rd, 2021. $21,000 card right out of the gate. Third card, exactly one year later from the first to the date, because when the congratulations, your first year, you know, with your first year with us, with this card, blah, blah, blah. That's the day that they went and got the more rewards card, which was their third and final card. The only thing that they can get, mind you, the only additional money they can get is possibly a thousand dollar credit limit increase, but you know, wait like six months, eight months, probably just to make sure. Now let's talk CLIs, credit limit increases. First one came December, 2021. The cash rewards went from 18,000 to 25,000. This was a $7,000 credit limit increase. During COVID, it was max 4,000. Now it's max 8,000. There are people left, right, and center getting CLIs for 8,000. So do it, put in 8,000. If you don't get that, they'll come back and give you an offer that's lower or approve you for something that's lower or tell you that you've hit in the max threshold for now and they can't do anything. If you push that in the uh, messages and send them a secured message, a lot of times, even if you're over the exposure limit, I've seen this happen, they'll give you like another $500,000, $800,000 uh, limit, and that's all you'll get. You'll definitely not get to $8,000, but they'll give you a little bone and they'll, they'll toss you a five hundred dollars to 1000 bucks more on your on your card, right? It's worth trying. Second credit limit increase, March of 2022. Go Rewards went from 21000 to 29000 Again, they caught on. 8000 is like the going rate for credit limit increases, the max that they'll give you. So they went for it, got it, bang. And then obviously the third card, there was no credit limit increase, but this was, you know, the third 91.3 essentially. And they went for the third card and they were granted 25K. So the third card was applied for at um, just past midnight, Eastern Standard Time, inside the application, the mobile app, okay? Said it would take up to 48 hours for them to hear back, blah, 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 you've seen the email. Within four, four hours or less, they got the approval email and bang, it was locked in, congratulations. That's a great feeling. Oh my God, instant approval, 
is by far the best feeling. Second best is thinking, oh man, got a seven to 10 day letter or 48 hour follow up and then bang, we got it. I love that. Those are great feelings, let me tell you. Now we're gonna get into some basic general details and then we're gonna break down the first six months and the second six months. Again, if you're not getting absolute gold out of this, I don't know what to tell you, but if you're loving this so far, hit the like button. It helps get this in front of more people. We need this to get in front of more people. We need more people to understand the game and to go and play it so that they can have access to the credit that they need. Opened uh, account on July 28th with $5. Day before the first application was processed, they had $60,000 in their flagship account. Completely unrealistic for most people. Understand that. Had a 775, 1% utilization, three to four years average age of account, and let's call it four inquiries at the time. Internal score that was given basically right out of the gates was 304, pretty high out of the gates. No initial direct deposits. Now let's go to uh, break this down. First six months uh, and second six months. Obviously, where did they start? They opened a flagship checking right out of the gates, which you have to pay for monthly. Take that into consideration. But if you want to get the flagship card or higher limits, it is a agreed upon assumption now by a large enough amount of the credit community that you got to get yourself a flagship checking account. Also too, the common thing you'll see throughout is using the bank, transactional history, right? Transactional history. What drum have we been banging now for two years? Transactional history. Okay, worked up the checking balance to about 130,000. Made over, let's say 30 mobile deposits over this time. Started getting direct deposits. So that was put on and consistent every single month. Opened two $250 pledge loans. Immediately paid off 80 to 90% and then trickled in small monthly payments. Again, if you're not up to speed on the, the pledge loan game, we've covered this in other videos. Get up to speed on that. I would tell you to join the Discord, but it's closed. Okay, opened six month cert for 1,000. Used the cards. Cards never saw balance past 1,500. Paid in full the statement balance every single month. During this time, had 12 to 14 new accounts when the second card was approved. Remember, the second card was for 21K. During this time, they had 12 to 14 new accounts hitting their credit profile. Internal score at the time was 365. Pretty crazy, right? All right, I hope you're getting a lot out of this. Let's wrap it up now with the second six months. And I think I got a few more takeaways I wanna share with you at the end. Opened third pledge loan for 250. Same strategy as before. Kept paying uh, statement balance in, uh, paid in full each month on both cards. Added to family account as joint owner. Pulled most of the money back out of the checking account. Left direct deposits in place. Got the email, hey, congratulations, one year anniversary, blah, blah, blah. Called in, wanted a uh, lower APR on their card. Said, hey, I don't like this APR, it's not good enough. They said, okay. And they dropped them down to literally the lowest APR that they offered on that card. And then on that same day, instead of doing credit limit increase, applied for the third card, bang, was approved. So there is the full story. Pretty crazy, right? At the time of the third card, there was seven inquiries. A lot of those were coming from Navy Fed at the time. FICO 9 was maybe 735-ish. There's a lot of bad data going out, going around still. There's a lot of people that have assumptions about how many inquiries and how that affects. And as we've seen time and time again, is that the internal metrics that you're creating with this transactional history back and forth tends to outweigh what the credit profile is telling them, especially when you got big balances in your accounts like this. So that's one way to win the game. You wanna like just jump to the front of the line, start slapping down some, some major balances in your checking account and keeping it there. Start pushing some big direct deposits. You know, I'd say minimum two, three K a month. And then you'll start to get some fruit from them. They'll start to really take care of you. I've got an example of this personally. We've got family that's done this. We've got now dozens of people in the community that have done this. Now, the first case study that we shared with you, there was all kinds of stuff all over the place and timelines weren't that specific. Second one we shared, timelines were more specific. And then third one, this one here, I hope you enjoyed this and you know the specifics that we, we uh, dived into. Again, I got something I wanna talk about, but it's uh, it's a little bit awkward because I'm not really sure about timing and I'm not really sure how, how in depth I should go, but essentially, uh, let me give you the broad strokes of it because since you're a community member, you need to know what's going on with this. Uh, we were approached with a trademark infringement slash takedown notice from our web host on WalletMonkey.io about a week and a half now, two weeks ago. We immediately reached out, tried to get clarification, of which we got none. So, because we were only given a 48 hour timeline window of opportunity from our host, and then they were gonna take down our entire website and attempt to take our domain, um, we just removed everything that had to do with this. Now, who was the trademark infringement from? Hurts me to say it, but it was from Navy Fed. 
So Navy Federal Credit Union came after us with, uh, through a third party rather. I don't know if they are even aware that this third party came after us. We're still tr gonna try and figure all this out and we're gonna take you know legal steps forward because um, we feel that this was a, um, a bad usage of trademark infringement considering trademark is on the logo itself and we've never used the logo on our domain. Now, I could get all crazy and conspiratorial about uh, over the target and blah, blah, blah. Maybe we're talking too much truth, but chances are what it probably was is on that page. If you remember down at the bottom, we talk about the pledge loan hack. I think that probably had something to do with it because that's not published data from Navy Fed. Maybe they didn't like that we were talking about that. Maybe that does open up um, more risk for them. If you know hundreds of thousands of people see that website, uh, which we do get uh, a large amount of traffic every single month on that website, that starts to create a problem for them. On top of that, we talk about maybe some of the other inner juicy details of Navy Fed on that page. So I'm not really sure where that leads us. We're taking steps on our end and we're fairly certain that we're gonna win. Again, I don't even know if Navy Fed was involved in this, but you see, we have no choice. We have no choice but to defend this legally to get them to sign on the dotted line to not come after us again, because what's to stop, you know, American Express, Bank of America, every single other bank from doing similar. Now it's really weird that just the domain was attacked. You still see all these YouTube videos up. You still see bank rates doing just fine. Creditcards.com is doing just fine. Doctor Credit is doing just fine. Every single other website, YouTube channel in the space did not get served up at all with any sort of trademark or DMCA type infringement. So it's kind of curious that we were the only ones attacked. I still don't really understand why. Again, we got zero clarification from them. We just had to act quickly and you know, abide by essentially the, um, the timeline that we were given, but that's where we're at. So you can expect that the page will come back up in due time. I don't know if we're gonna like throttle back on how much we put on the website because we can just cover a lot of these maybe inner juicier details and videos, and that seems to be not a problem at all. We're not really getting attacked or having anyone come after us for that. Um, I'm not really sure, but that's also why you've kind of seen us take a little bit change of focus with our videos in terms of just getting more people to talk about their journeys and the amount of credit limit that they've got, whether it's anonymously or they're attaching their name to it, because we're trying to bring you guys the most value that we possibly can. And I think an extremely valuable thing is to hear people's firsthand accounts. Now you can go to our website, you can check out the master credit card lender list, and it's just like pages and pages and pages of data points. Credit scores, what bureau are they pulling? What was the average year, um, average age of account? What was you know their credit score at the time? How many inquiries did they have at the time? All of that's great, but to hear the more complete pie and the more complete puzzle of somebody's entire credit profile, I think is, is um, the next iteration for us anyway. So we're gonna be focusing more on this. And now that we've covered so much of the uh, credit rebuilding journey, I want to cr cover more of the, okay, now how to get over 100,000 and credit limits, personal. How do we get over you know, half a million, million dollars with business credit? That's what's interesting to me now because that's what I'm working towards, personally. So that's what we're gonna be doing and covering more on the channel. I wanna leave a question though with you is, obviously we're gonna spend quite a bit legally going after and attempting to defend ourselves. So, and I've been thinking about this for a while is we've done nothing but give, 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 give for, you know, uh, what is this, over a year. Uh, maybe even two years now on the channel and the website since December 2020, essentially. There's many of you out there that wanna support us. How should we do that? Should we do a membership on YouTube? Should we do a Patreon? Should we do a donation link? How do you think we should do that? And especially with the upcoming legal battle and what we're gonna be paying there, it wouldn't be a bad thing for us to subsidize that if you want to support us. I don't know how that comes across or how that sounds. I know that uh, right now is very interesting times economically, so none of this would be forced in any sort of way. Um, we've also got the Discord, so maybe we could just lock that down and anyone that wants to join it, because right now nobody can, maybe we, we lock that down and, and have people donate to be able to join that. I'm not really sure, but I wanna hear your guys' feedback in the comments below is, um, are you game for that? Uh, are you okay if we were to start doing something like that? And what does that look like? This is the journey of a $5 account or $5 savings account all the way now through to three credit cards and a 20K limit on a platinum that just happened in August. Now, I love these case studies because I hope that, you know, we're into, I think this is the fourth or fifth, that you are kind of starting to piece together your own plan out of this, right? Seeing the details of somebody's journey is gonna help you kind of put together your own plan of attack. Anyways, that's what I hope you get out of these. I'd also love to hear your, you know, feedback and comments below. It helps with the video, helps get more people to see it. I think this stuff is really important. Hopefully you agree. Uh, smash the like button if you like what we're doing with the case studies. Okay.
let's uh, let's go through it. I've got this just listed out like bullet point style. And at the end, I've got a nice little spin and I definitely got a question that I'm gonna leave with you uh, at the end. So stick around till the end. Open an account, basic checking savings account. I think the minimum is five bucks that you gotta put in a savings account. So that was opened January of 2021. Applied for credit card, the cash rewards was approved for 500. Basically got mad, they got mad, they got stingy and let the account sit until Q4 of 2021. So essentially how, how it started to ramp up was they started to do direct deposits, I think it was like December of 2021. And then come February, opened up the uh, first pledge loan and I think they, these were small amounts. It was less than 500, but I think they were in a 250 range. Uh, February 11th, approved for the second card. So it was basically like open a pledge loan and immediately, well, almost immediately, try to get the second card. Was approved uh, for the second card, 3,000 uh, credit limit. I don't know which card this was because with the storyline, I'm a little bit confused. It's, they either ended up with this one being platinum and the other one being platinum or this one, I'm still not sure on. So let's just leave that blank for now. But they got a second card with a $3,000 limit. March 18th, requested a credit limit increase on the credit rewards and they got approved for a 1k credit limit uh, increase and so total of $1,500 now on the cash rewards, 3000 on the second card, barely used the cards, you know, maybe let $100 or two roll over uh, or carry balance from, from month to month and the cash rewards was not being used at all. So fast forward to August, paid off the pledge loan because there was only one, <laughs> so paid that off and then used the pre-qualification tool, saw that they were pre-screened for, for some cards, I, I'm not sure which cards they were approved for, but or pre-qualified for, but they went ahead and pulled the trigger and got a bot approval, so immediate approval of a 20,000 uh, Platinum. So the Platinum is such a great card because it's low APR, you can use it as a balance transfer card, especially when you're dealing with a 20K limit like this, it's a really, really great uh, debt weapon to use. And so there's a lot of guys I know that are using that and using that in conjunction with, you know, pledge loans and other things that they offer that um, this really can set you up really, really good, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and share some uh, some information about income, all of that, just give me a sec. Let's now look at the score piece. That's the biggest like, whoa, about this. And here is the biggest point that I wanna make, the score that this guy has is a 565 as you can see on the screen right now 565 now this is you know vantage uh, so keep that keep that in mind but the the credit score is not great at all and that is like the biggest biggest interesting point I think uh, out of this is that there was such a thin relationship and the credit score was so bad but we're gonna talk about that more in just a second okay so yeah, it has a uh, TransUnion score in the uh, high 500s is 565 13 inquiries over 50% utilization 10 new accounts, average age of account is 45 years, no derogatories, a high stated income, 90,000. So that I think helps, having a high stated income. Last internal was maybe 268. The internal score now is 306, the last time they checked in August. The internal score was bumped up from the direct deposits, from the you know transactional history, just like we talk about, right? So high stated income of 90K, I think that definitely helped. And here's here's another piece that, that I found out like after, like shared the story and then he's like, oh, hey, by the way, he was added onto my account. So I think he's an authorized user or they're like co-signer on the account or something like that. Not on the credit cards themselves, but I think he's either an authorized user on accounts that have, they're maxed out. So I think he's an AU on basically accounts that have 80K uh, on three cards. So now I don't know if that helped, but that's just like, went to the store and was just like shaking my head like, whoa, what happened? And then he dropped that on me. So that is a variable that might be more important than we realize, I don't know. AUs are, aren't supposed to do anything with Navy Fed, but maybe they do, maybe they do more. So maybe it was that with the stated income, who knows? This is all speculation. But let's let's really look at this for a second, okay? There wasn't years of relationship that was being built. Also too, he wasn't using the accounts. So there wasn't like this, um, if they were tracking balance, like if balance was super important, like he had nothing. He wasn't really using the accounts until he started doing direct deposits. So again, that had more transactional history there, but you know, look, he, he wasn't using it at all. Then the next piece that we need to look at, we can't ignore is over 50% utilization. Look at the credit score. So I'm just wondering how much these factors are really being taken into consideration or if those kind of get a back burner to the internal components that are being looked at. And I know there's a ton of people that are like, look, internal score doesn't matter. It's only used on the first product. It's not that important. They don't track pledge loans. They don't track personal loans. None of that matters, blah, 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 blah. I've heard all that. I understand that. You can't deny outlying situations like this. This isn't just some kid with fresh out of college, no credit, has amazing DTI and gets a 20K limit. Okay, so maybe some, some factors that we don't realize are as important, but they might prove to be, 
is think about this for a second. He he had the account for over a year, you know? So maybe the six, 12, 24 months of having the account matters. Then obviously he started using it. So he had internal data points, but then he also had excellent uh, payment history. So making bigger over the minimum payments, maybe that matters more than we realize. I don't know. Maybe the fact that, you know, he wasn't really carrying a balance played a larger role. I'm just trying to list out the variables for you and you can kind of piece them together. And what we're going to notice over time is that all these variables might prove to be important. They might prove to be a nothing burger. Uh, it's just going to depend, but I'm just trying to state them all out here for you now um, so that you can kind of, you know, uh, do with it what you will, right? That's all I got for you. What I wanted to do was just talk about one thing within Navy Federal Credit Union that we noticed in the community just this last week. It appears as though there is some sort of auto approval system that's either being tested at a small scale or rolled out on a large scale for credit limit increases, meaning that instead of it typically when you request a credit limit increase, it goes to an underwriter and then you'll get some sort of notification back within 24 hours. You'll notice the credit limit has changed, etc. You might notice this after an hour. I know that in the beginning, um, it was actually pretty quick for me to get a credit limit increase. It just depends on the day and the volume. But it would appear that now there's some sort of automated approval bot or automated approval system that is just automatically doing it. So you go to request the credit limit increase and then all of a sudden you're shown this that you see on the screen right now, which is an automatic, essentially, uh, hey, you got approved splash screen or redirect screen. This. I don't think existed before. So again, I don't know if this is like a large scale thing, small scale testing, not sure. But this one here too, I just want to note that this is somebody who they only had a thousand dollars left before they hit the $80,000 limit. So that's why this occurred. And so that's why this was only a um, $1,000 credit limit increase. Understand though that you would get much larger, which the going rate still seems to be somewhere between four to 8,000 um, on credit limit increases. And I've even heard of people getting back to back credit limit increases now using this strategy. So what I would suggest is go check it out for yourself. Remember the rest of the rules with six months between credit limit increases and everything else that we've covered on the channel. This will go into our Navy Federal playlist. So you're going to want to go through the rest of the playlist understand the ins and outs of Navy Federal, check out the other case studies. We've got a absolute ton of data now. Today, what I wanted to discuss and cover with you is the Navy Federal Credit Union flagship card. Yes, the House of High Limits, the quintessential card, the card that supposedly can go up to $80,000 with a minimum balance of $5,000. So keep that in mind. If you were to want the product change or do something into this card, you've already got to have a credit limit on the previous card of 5,000 or more. But this 80,000, just to get this out of the way, is from every rep I've ever talked to, we've got other people in the community that are talking to Navy Federal on a constant basis. Nobody in the system has actually ever seen somebody get an $80,000 flagship card, even though it's possible. You could also have three uh, flagship cards. Now, let's, let's cover some basics here. Before we get into Navy Fed basics, let's cover the card. So I got my iPad open here so I could get the most up-to-date information for you. So rates are 12.24 to 18%. I notice a lot of people write in that 17 to 17.99% APR range, like um, somebody in the community, I'm literally looking at their screenshot right there. They got 17.74% on a $20,000 uh, flagship card. Congratulations again, that's awesome. So we've got that, we've got a $49 annual fee a minimum of $5,000, maximum of $80,000. The maximum tends to be more like 25 to 30,000. And I'd love to hear you comment below if you've got over this. I don't think I've seen a single person with over 30,000 on a single flagship, but if you've got more than that, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, 3X points on travel, 2X points on everything else. You get credits for, what is this, global entry or TSA pre, uh, no cash advance fees, no foreign transaction fees as well, no balance transfer fees. And I said the $49 um, transfer fee as well. Okay, so let's talk some basics here. Out of the gates, uh, Navy Fed pulls uh, TransUnion, FICO 9. Uh, they are pulling from a couple of their data sources um, that I noticed recently. It's mostly gonna be TransUnion now. And it's usually one hard pull per product that you wanna get, but for some reason, 
I don't even know if this is still happening. There's this point in time where if you did have a, an application that did a hard pull, then you could possibly use it again for like a credit limit increase or something like that. I don't know if that's still true, but TransUnion FICO 9 for most of what they're gonna do. For uh, credit limit increases, they've been known to pull uh, Equifax uh, 9 and credit limit increases also use Equifax FICO 9 as well. You can pre-qualify for any card on the website right now, but you need an active membership and you just go to pre-qualify me. It's literally at the top on the credit cards page. And if you pre-qualify for any of those cards, you are very likely to get them. So that is the good thing about the pre-qualification tool is that it's, they're not really playing games with it. Is that like, they're just telling you flat out, like, yes, based off what we're able to pull and your internal factors, whatever they're pulling from algorithmically is um, you have great odds of getting that card. Like, I don't know if I've ever heard of somebody not get the card after they've been pre-qualified. So just keep that in mind, right? If you're pre-qualifying for the flagship card, then you should probably get it. Um, if you're not pre-qualifying, then get a different card. But if you're not seeing the flagship card as one of your pre-qualification offers, do not try and apply because most likely you will get denied. And then you'll be able to pre-qualify and see your likelihood of getting these cards and then pull the trigger and get that new card. And then of course there will be a hard pull, right? Okay, maximum exposure that you can get with Navy Federal right now is $80,000. Now that's $80,000 collectively. Understand that is the hard cap, the maximum exposure from the bank. Depending on your credit profile and your credit situation is you might actually be hitting like a soft cap, let's call it, or a maximum exposure limit for you that you've reached. And that's only because you need to build up more transactional history. I can't say this enough. So I'm, I'm plugging it in here, right? So you need to build up more transactional history. You need to open up some smart certificates or uh, open a pledge loan or do more transactions, right? Those are things that can all help. Also too, to increase your odds of getting um, pre-approved for the flagship card is to get the flagship checking account. Now this is a checking account that's supposed to be used for balances of 1500 and above. They actually give APR out on your balance, your daily balance. Um, but if you've got uh, lower than a $1,500 daily balance, then I think I don't know how many days that it's lower than that, they'll charge you, I think like $10 a month for that, right? The maximum uh, credit line that you can get is 25,000 before it starts to trigger, you know, some sort of proof of income or some sort of verification. And that, that seems to be the, the standard, right? I've heard that across the boards. Now, when you go to get credit limit increases, it's fine. You can go to 30, you can go to, you know, and above, right? Which I think the most I've heard on the card, like I said, is 30,000. So I'd love to hear from you if, if you've gotten above that. But. 25,000 is about the max that they'll approve you for on one of these cards, right? It's usually 20,000. Um, and then, yeah, if you've got lower credit, then you're gonna get a uh, lower amount uh, be below what, what I just outlined, right? Max you can get is three cards, so you could get three flagship cards, but again, remember your maximum exposure would be 80,000, so however that would be divvied up across those three cards, and we've proven this yet again recently. The credit limit increases were maxed at about 4,000 during COVID, but recently we've had people get $8,000 credit limits, back-to-back -back credit limit increases, uh, so it, that seems to be broken, but 8,000 is the new or regular limit on a credit limit increase. And again, I've seen a few situations to where they were actually given more than that. But uh, we had somebody who recently, like 80, uh, excuse me, they're at 79,000 and then they, they got a credit limit increase for $1,000 on one of their cards. And so they got a $30,000 limit on that card, but now they're at maximum exposure of, of 80,000 on the card. So yes, it's possible to get the $80,000 on the card. I, again, just nobody's seen it. So I would actually love to see that because I think that'd be absolutely incredible. Very powerful card at $80,000. Even a $50,000 card is extremely powerful because the amount that you can cash advance, the amount that you can get liquid off of that card pretty much immediately is uh, very very substantial and can get you out of just about any problem you can think of or get yourself into with that, as well as you can start to really leverage that uh, to get cash off that card to do something with, right? So anyways, those are, those are the particulars. Uh, a few other things that I wanna end with is, let's recap the 91.3, which is 91 days or three statement days between credit limit increases. And sometimes if you're denied, you can use that same um, hard pull from before, like I mentioned earlier, but I, I don't even know if that's gonna be something that you would expect. Just expect that they will pull you again for another hard pull if you, uh, if you wanna do another credit limit increase, right? And then lastly, and what I wanna leave you with is that internal score matters. Now I know to a lot of people that the internal score doesn't matter and it's only used once. It's supposed to be just used on credit cards the very first time. I don't think it is, guys. And we've seen proof and proof of this again, time and time again, rather, um, that this, uh, it's used, right? It's used often is what it appears, uh, appears to be. And it's used on uh, at least their credit cards, but maybe even other products. So. Improving your, your internal score is the key here. That is the relationship that you are trying to build with them. And lastly, 
if you do get pre-approved, uh, understand that I'm looking at a screenshot right now. There will be a 60,000 bonus points or $600 value that you could also get when spending $5,000 in the first 90 days and you'll get a free year of Amazon Prime on them. So that is the current deal that you can expect in terms of a sign up bonus. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your experiences with the flagship card with Navy Fed. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Of course you love it. Well, who am I kidding? Today, what I want to talk about, and I want to do a follow up to the last Navy Fed video that we did talking about the flagship uh, rewards cards. So go figure that I go talking about the flagship and say, hey, no one in our community has ever seen one card with $80,000 limit on that flagship. Well, my friends, today is the day. It is official. I think this is probably the only person on the planet, possibly, that has this, only because even when we would talk to reps, as I mentioned in the last video, none of them had even seen this. This was posted in the MyFICO forum. Shout out to whoever this is, congratulations. It sounds like they did a little bit of hustling and moving around and product changing to make this happen, but they have one flagship and it has $80,000 credit limit. Look at this right here. Um, they were able to man maintain a really low interest rate, 11.49, 13.49 on cash advance, which they can cash advance up to 24,000, which is crazy. And here we go. So this is recent data um, that we've got. So there we go. It's official. We've now seen someone with an $80,000 solo single um, signature flagship card. Okay. So last bit of house cleaning was there were some people asking like, hey, the current uh, rewards that are being offered on the site aren't what you talked about. About. And so here's what that is, is somebody asked about this specifically. So 60,000 bonus points, a $600 value after spending $5,000 in the first 90 days. Um, this is a targeted pre-approval offer. So that is very different than even, you know, the pre-qualify uh, tool on the site. This is targeted via, look at this, this is an email sent to them. So here's another one. Here's what another one looked like. You're pre-approved, apply for the flagship card. Save you the rewards today. Congrats on being pre-approved for the flagship card. So. This is like a basic pre-approval. This is a very targeted pre-approval with the exact um, bonusing that you're gonna be getting on that card. So I just wanted to show you that as well. Next thing that I wanna talk about is that in that video, I mentioned that the pre-qualification tool is pretty good and it's accurate. Well, I've gotten massive amounts of conflicting data now from OG members of the community stating that it's really not. You can play around with that and test that and see. You'll see like, okay, you just got approved for a card and then you're still getting pre-qualified or things like that. So there seems to be a lag in it for sure. That's similar to Credit Karma as well as sometimes you're just pre-qualifying for it when you're not gonna get it. Um, and we had, I think maybe three or four people in the comments say that they were pre-qualified for cards and then they tried to pull the trigger and they got denied. Keep in mind, if you get denied for the first one, please don't do it again. One guy said that he tried to get two different cards and got denied both times. Please don't do that. Um, that's ridiculous. If you get denied the first time and it's not going to magically, you know, work for the second time, you might want to call in and figure out what might have happened on the first one before you even think about doing another one. Please get those inquiries wiped and, you know, wait some more time and try again. So I think that's all the house cleaning on the flagship rewards um, video that we did. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the love in the comments and all the sharing that you guys do. I love this channel. I love this community. Um, what we've created. Speaking of the community, it seems like the community is on fire lately with Navy Fed. So I really didn't want to shoot a Navy Fed, another Navy Fed video this soon. Um, but I just can't help it because we had two huge wins within like the last three days. So how am I not going to talk about this? First one is a shout out to Timmy. This one just happened today. Here's the data points on the left and here's what they got on the right. This is the first Navy Fed card that they got out of the gates with a flagship rewards with a $25,000 limit and 12.2 for APR, which is amazing right now, especially with how high Prime is and interest rates, you know, everything else. Huge congratulations. I know that he was super jacked about this. So here's his data points. Open uh, savings, checking, money market, CD, save first account, easy start account, and a pledge loan in June. Then by July, dumped a $10,000 cashier's check just to trigger good cash inflow and switched my work direct deposit also into the account as well. I told you it's all about data points with the internal score. Uh, so I did check the pre-qualification tab today and applied tonight, basically. So late night hack possibly coming into play yet again still, but the work was done. The pre-work was done since June and it's, you know, it's September. So, I mean, getting this set up and established, getting the history of direct deposit, getting the pledge loan in there, paying off 85 to 95% of it right away, getting in some money markets, you know, some CDs, all different kinds of saving uh, tools there is what does it. Now you can do a bunch of little ones or just do one big one. I bet if he would have just done a, you know, this big 10K 
drop in there that that probably would have been enough right there as well as the uh, the direct deposit but I, I don't know we don't have enough data all we're doing here is sharing stories with you so I hope you enjoy this next is we have um, M F N is uh, I don't know the rest of his username but he's been in the community for a really long time shout out to you my friend 304 internal score and they recently got I think this just like two days ago the flagship for 20,000 17.7 for APR which is still epic APR especially with what a lot of people are getting and what the you know prime rate etc is this is an amazing card checking savings pledge loan CD more rewards credit card at the time and uh over, what is this overdraft protection service I think at the time as well and that was it and they had a 304 internal score hasn't been in Navy Fed that long so and it's, what's funny is like this is literally all just flagship updates in this video uh i didn't really plan it that way but there's just so much now that happened with the community and then i wanted to obviously address the uh the couple concerns from that that past video but if you have any other questions about flagship navy fed etc our community definitely seems to be on fire lately with dialing in our process everyone in the community is crushing it i, th I think everyone in the community that's active has at least a twenty thousand dollar card through navy fed which is hilarious and amazing at the same time so is navy federal credit union in trouble man i can't tell you how often i get that question i get it in the comments section i get people dming me and i get it look i get it we don't want a good thing to end we can't deny that they hand it seems anyway that they hand out 20k 15k limits to kids like they're skittles so you start to think man i love this bank uh, they're treating me well you know i'm kind of running my own little my own little scheme on it my own little gambit right i'm trying to max myself out at at my eighty thousand. Uh, max exposure limit and I don't want this to end before that happens or even after it happens because they're maybe being careless with how they're loaning out so what I figured we could do today is actually go over the capitalization of this bank and their assets and how they're looking from a health standpoint <laughs> So here we are. They are the number one ranked credit union in the United States. Their assets are 159 billion. Yes, you read that right, $159 billion. Their asset growth over the previous 12 months, so year over year, is 7.38%. They have 337 branches across 31 states and over 20,000 employees. They have 25 million customer accounts. That is insane. Let's just clear up some basics. When a bank when a company grows at a fast rate you're lucky if the only thing that falls off is customer service you are lucky trust me there could be all kinds of other underlying issues especially with banks if they grow too quick you have to start worrying about are they allocating asset properly do they have enough to cover the balance sheet what does capitalization look like right those are the questions you have to start to think about when a bank grows too fast well navy fed has been growing at a consistent rate for almost a decade now and so it's absolutely insane to me to think that anything's gonna change. And as long as they keep growing and outpacing what else is happening in the market, and they're not making big, dramatic, aggressive moves and investing in really, really stupid stuff, they'll be just fine, right? They will be just fine. They have 25 million customers. That is crazy, isn't it? You know what's even crazier is I can call into Navy Fed right now and I'll talk to a real person in the United States. They will not filter me through India or, you know, somewhere in the Middle East. I will not have to, you know, go through five different prompts just to get to, you know, that first person and then, you know, have them transfer me over to, you know, onshore to the U.S. to then get my problem solved. Yet we deal with that with big banks. So I can still call in the Navy Fed and I'm talking to somebody. So they've kept that really, really tight. You know, with all this growth, they've had uh, they've been able to stay ahead of that. And their staff is extremely knowledgeable. Like even the general people that you talk to when you first call in, they've got a ton of knowledge about the bank and how it operates. That's usually really difficult to do because there's others in this top 10 that do not do that and who have failed in that sense. And as they've grown, even in the top 100, as these credit unions have grown, they've run into problems, right? So anyways, Navy Fed, largest credit union in the United States, $159 billion in assets. Let's break it down. Here we go. They are a A plus health rating. So the Texas ratio is an indicator of how much capital a bank has available compared to the total value of loans considered at risk. As of June 30th, 2022, so this data is based on quarter two of this year, Navy Fed has 941 million in non-current loans and owned real estate with 26.23 billion in equity and loan loss allowances on hand to cover it. 941 million in non-current loans and real estate loans 
26 billion on hand to handle it. This gives Navy Fed a Texas ratio of 3.59, which is excellent. Any bank with a Texas ratio near or greater than 100% is considered at risk, duh. Okay, let's look at deposit growth. Navy Fed has increased its total non-broker deposits by 12.89 billion, resulting in 10.53% growth for the year. Looking pretty good. And lastly, capitalization. A uh, higher capitalization allows for a greater buffer when to cover loans that may fail in the future. It's kind of funny how that's like a massive typo right there. Uh, Navy Fed uh, has $159 billion in assets with $26.23 billion in equity, resulting in a capitalization level of 16.42%, which again is excellent. You can actually look at assets and liabilities here, and you, could, you probably could dig even deeper if you wanted to through other means and look at some other filings that they are forced to submit each quarter and look at you know how they're sitting right return on equity year to date is 7.38 percent not bad look i get it you know a lot of people are worried they see you know youtube videos and everyone's talking about navy fed and blah 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 right and they think that that's going to somehow change unless they make dramatic change to what they're doing i mean they're sitting here juggling 25 million customers billions of dollars on the books you know a lot of flow in and out every single day every single month and they've been able to keep their customer support strong and they've been able to keep their inner working strong as they roll out new products as they make you know, credit product changes. So I don't know, man, like I think it would, I would be hard pressed to think that they're going to have an issue anytime soon, especially when you look at in comparison to other banks, like uh, other credit unions, like Penn Fed, who can't even get their website figured out, who their personal loan pre-qualification page, it like airs out. So you get like a 404 air message, like their website looks like it was made in 97. You know, they can't keep up with, with their growth right now. And you see it everywhere. You see it on their website, their page load speeds, um, your ability to go, to call in and talk to somebody. So, I mean, that's just a quick comparison, but there's all kinds of other credit unions we could compare. We could be here all day comparing it. And they haven't even seen the size of growth that Navy Fed has. So, I don't know. My answer is I think they're good. I think they're just fine for now. Keep an eye on it. You know, you can go to this site yourself, depositaccounts.com. Check it out for yourself and uh, check in on it every single quarter and see what it's looking like. But yeah, to those of you who are worried, I would say based on this data, probably safe to assume that um, that they're okay for now. Hey, let's talk about Navy Federal Credit Union business credit cards. Now, I know we talk a lot about the personal side. I think we've kind of, you know, solidified and beaten that dead horse <laughs> um, with, you know, the data points and now the case studies that we've uh, we've provided for the community. I hope that is uh, good. I think we should move on now and start to cover business and other things in that realm, right? So on the business side, they've actually got a lot of solutions. They've consolidated some things, it looks like. I know for a while they used to uh, they used to offer the cash rewards and a lot of the other personal cards you could get on the business side. Uh, but now it looks like they've consolidated that to one card with both a Visa or MasterCard to it, and that's it. So let's let's get into this. Starting all the way at the beginning you have to have a personal account. After you get a personal account set up, you can immediately set up a business account. You'll need all your incorporation documentation. You'll need your uh, address information that was submitted. Even I would bring in the EIN um, form that you got back from the government. If it's owned by a trust or if it's owned by multiple partners, meaning that somebody owns 25% or more, all those people got to come in you know, and be a part of that, that process, uh, whether you do it in person or you can even do it online. And then what else? I think that's it. But for when I set one of these up before, it was a trust that actually owned uh, the LLC. It was just a little bit more difficult. Uh, a lot more paperwork was involved uh, for them to understand you know, what what's what. But if you've got just a regular LLC, should be really, really simple to get uh, get started. So then you need to get a business membership, which I believe is still a one-time fee of like $97 or $99. It's been like two, three years since I did it, but it should be something like that. Then you set up the membership and then boom, they give you checking and savings. You got to fund the checking or savings account. The savings account can be funded with a credit card. It does not come across as a cash advance fee and uh, you can use that to, to fund it, right? I think up to $250, something like that. After that happens, probably want to build up some data points, right? Get some direct deposits going, you know, make weekly deposits. Even if it's a low income business, even if the business is making no money, you want to build up some data points first. We all know that this is true on the personal side. So why wouldn't it be true on the business side, right? Then we can start to look at credit cards or loans. So let's go through these one at a time. So here's the membership aspect and piece. So everything we just talked about, you want to sign into your personal account, then you get access to the, uh, pre-application form, you gotta fill it all out, compile all the documents, and then get it over to them, right? I, I don't know if you can actually do the submission online or not. Uh, I assume you can by now, but it used to be all in person only. So 
Now we got membership. Now let's look at credit cards. They've got the Go Biz Rewards and that's it. They've got a Visa or a MasterCard. And the only difference between the two is right here. So with Visa, you get these protections and these pieces, benefits. With MasterCard, you get these benefits. Now what's cool is I'm gonna show you some case studies at the end. We got people that got approved for both cards. Let's go through this really quick. APRs are 10.65 to 18%, which is really good for a business card. And then rewards is one X point per dollar spent. And then you've got no foreign transaction fees, zero liability policy and unauthorized transactions, no earnings cap uh, available as Visa or MasterCard, as I said. And then we come back down here to the fine print and we see rewards are earned on eligible net purchases. Net purchases are defined as the sum of your eligible purchase transactions minus returns and refunds. Here's what's funny. Now, I'm sure you guys have looked at enough of these TOSs by now and disclosures by now. Not everyone says it like that. That's all I'm gonna say. Not everyone words it like that, but a lot of them do. So that when they word it as net purchases, that means that obviously they're gonna take off refunds, you know, returns, any, you know, non, um, non approved transactions, et cetera, et cetera, right? But just keep in mind that not all of them do. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Transactions that will not earn are the following cash advance, convenience check, balance transfer, gambling, or fees of any kind, including finance charges, late fees, return check fees, and ATM cash advance fees. Yeah, see, it even goes on to say cash equivalent transactions such as the purchase, loading, or reloading of gift card and prepaid cards. Money orders, go prepaid cards, and other cash equivalent uh, gift cards may not be eligible purchase transactions to earn rewards. Points expire four years from the month in which they were earned as long as the account is open. There you go. So again, pretty straightforward, right? Let's get into the business loans. They've got a few different options here. There's obviously like big stuff, you know, getting the actual land, commercial type deals, but there's also really simple stuff like a business line of credit. So we've got two options here. We've got a secured business line of credit and we've got a checking line of credit. Checking line of credit or CLOC is uh, really common actually. Most credit unions offer this. They'll usually give it a couple hundred dollars up to a couple thousand. This one, they'll give you 500, 1,000 or 5,000. APR is 17.90%. Again, this is meant to be used for like overdraft protection and um, offsetting like uh, short-term needs, right? And then the secured business line of credit is best for established businesses, bridging cash flow gaps, you know, maybe bigger gaps, larger gaps of time and larger gaps of money would be probably more, more, more applicable here. What you'll need to apply, uh, completed inside business loan application, business tax returns for the last two years. See, they tell you exactly what you need. Business plan may be required, personal tax returns for all owner, owners or guarantors, most recent two years etc etc okay now something to keep in mind is that even though you're applying for this credit card off of the merit of the llc it's not fully off the merit of the llc they will pull experian on you personal and that is what is essentially getting you approved this is talked about so much now which i love is that you don't need to go and get all these tier one accounts and all these net 30 accounts just put yourself as personal guarantor problem solved okay so let's go over some data points navy fed go biz rewards mastercard was approved llc open 1.5 years old business and personal checking account since march 2021 deposit regularly weekly or bi-weekly side business with low revenue Hard pulled Experian FICO 8. Uh, Experian score at the time was 752. Doesn't know the uh, Navy Fed internal score. Have two Navy Fed personal cards, 25K and 19K limits. An auto loan for 43,000 and a 1K pledge loan. Has a DUNS number, very thin credit, business credit file. Two net 30 accounts. Only other business card is Amex Business Plus card with a 10K limit. So like I said, like thin file, thick file, doesn't really matter, right? Here's a one that's a little bit more details. Personal checking and savings account for three years. Uh, partial direct deposits going to checking account. Overdraft protection, is that what that is? OOPS protection on the checking account. LLC created in March of 2022, six and a half months old at the time of application. Dunn's number was automatically assigned to me, but not sure from where. Okay, business checking account uh, at other banks. And here's the good stuff. So this one's a more seasoned file as a FNBO Evergreen, a Truist, a Capital uh, on Tap. I've been hearing really, really good things about that. They give out 10, 10, 20K like it's Skittles, but you got to have like minimum of 30K, I think, as your uh, business revenue per year. Divi Business Builder, secured card. So it is self-funded, reports to all three business credit bureaus. Next, we've got the actual the accounts here. Okay, so he got approved for the Visa and MasterCard, 7,500 each, but the balance is split across the two. So business checking and savings account opened April, 2022, deposits weekly and biweekly, no income, but deposited other liquid monies into the account, no other products with Navy Fed. Uh, they pulled uh, one time Experian FICO 8 for both cards, 
It was a 760 at the time, seven inquiries. So again, approved for 7,500 on each card and a balance is gonna be split on both, right? So there you go. That's uh, that's all the goods on uh, Navy Fed business side, as well as some most recent um, data points from the community itself. Shout out to everyone in the community, always sharing and helping each other. This is the next big step for a lot of you. The next big step is business credit and really starting to uh, elevate. We're gonna talk and go through another Navy Fed case study. Only been with Navy Fed for 20 months. It only took him 18 months to max out the 80K credit limit across three cards. He's also got a personal loan and he's got the lowest APR on all three cards. We're gonna go through his story today. This is coming from Sind96. He's a follower of the channel and uh, always commenting in. He mentioned this several times and uh, I don't know why I didn't do a video before, but here it is. I like to show both sides of it. Like we've now shown people who brand new right out of the gates, you know, had the account a couple days and then bang, got their first card, uh, had $5 in the savings account all the way on up to people who did, you know, all kinds of uh, money market accounts and pledge loans and direct deposits and savings accounts and all this other stuff. Now, both ways work. Obviously we've, sh we've shown that, right? We don't know what the differentiated ADER is or variable differentiating variables are at this point. All we know is that both ways work. Uh, just is going to depend on you and your uh, your profile. So let's get started. Okay, first card. He started with a thousand dollar more rewards three days after he got his account with only five dollars uh, that has to go into the savings account. Right after a few increases and a product change, it's now a seventeen thousand dollar flagship uh, card. Right second card. Ninety one days later was eleven thousand go rewards card. Same deal. Product change and a few increases. It's now a twenty seven thousand dollar more rewards card. Third card, 91 days later, after that was uh, was a 20,000 cash rewards, same deal, product change increases, it's now a $36,000 platinum. So he's got a flagship, more rewards and a platinum. I honestly think that's the same route I'm gonna go. I got a uh, cash rewards right now, but I think I'm gonna product change it over. Then uh, I wanna product change that over to the flagship and then try and uh, nail a platinum because it's a uh, low APR and I like that. So anyway, now after I did that and maybe like ran through that, if I'm not gonna get yearly 0% APR offers, which I'm not sure if they do on a Platinum, if I don't get that, then I would just upgrade to probably two flagships and a more rewards, which is the Amex. Okay, uh, two pledge loans, uh, one for $250 and that one finished, and then one for $2,001 for three years. Uh, I only have $10 in my savings account, uh, which he uses to pay the pledge loans, doesn't use Navy Fed at all. Ooh, interesting, right? So it doesn't have any transactional history really outside of, you know, well, I don't know his uh, his credit score. I don't know uh, what his stated income is. You know, I don't know those variables. If you wanna comment below, then uh, let us know, uh, fill in those gaps. Otherwise, you know, that's cool too. Uh, I also have a $21,000 personal loan with collateral uh, on a side-by-side -side UTV that I opened 11 months ago. 9.55% interest rate, ooh, sweet. And uh, he says, oh yeah, all three credit cards, lowest interest rate that they offer which is different for each card, but it's pretty low, sub 10%, I think, for all three. Uh, I don't think it's too bad for not using Navy Fed as a bank and only using it for the credit products. I agree. So here you go. Here's the other side of the coin. Somebody who's not using it at all, max it out within 18 months, and we've shown the other side of the coin, which, you know, obviously people get in product and transactional history out the wazoo. So another great success story. Shout out to Sin96, thanks for sharing this. In this video, we're gonna cover another Navy Fed uh, data point here. Essentially, what we're gonna talk about is what to do and what it means if you get rejected on another card. So let's dive into this one. So shout out to uh, Danny Boyd for sharing this. So essentially what happened was he applied for another Navy Federal card. He's literally at 91 days from his first card and he got denied. So when you get denied, if you wanna do recon or reconsideration, it's actually done through the secured message portal. I think it's always been like this. Um, and it is a little weird, but you basically just like say, hey, I got denied, can you reconsider? And then if it's on a credit limit increase, they'll say, yes, we can go up to this amount or no, we can't because you've basically hit your soft cap in terms of uh, max exposure that we're willing to give you right now, AKA come back later because your credit score either isn't good enough you haven't done enough products with them, et cetera. And or you can do it if you've got denied for a card and sometimes they can actually reconsider you, sometimes not. It's just kind of like a roll of the dice. So essentially went through that, said, nope, we can't. And here's the reasons why. These are very telling reasons. They're very direct in, in relationship to what you could get at other banks. Like sometimes they're, they're so vague. 
that you don't even really know what they're saying. Here, pretty straightforward. So let's dive into this here. Balance status of Navy Federal accounts. This actually means that your balances are too low in your checking, savings, et cetera accounts, or that maybe you're uh, not keeping enough daily balance in there uh, turn out to be the daily balance. So maybe just leaving the money in there a little bit longer or more money, that's that one. Insufficient variety of secured loan accounts. That's your pledge loan, okay? Or any other loan account through them, right? That's what they're essentially telling you there. Direct deposit status with Navy Federal. <laughs> there you go. That one's the most obvious. Set up direct deposit. Uh, number of credit card trades opened in the past 24 months and number of inquiries on credit bureaus. I always look at like the top one to three as those are the, really the main reasons why you're getting denied for something. This is for any denial letter with any institution. And the last couple are just kind of like, yeah, in this too. Is that as important as the top ones? No. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my eyes and how I've always seen it and my experiences is that the top ones matter the most. The bottom ones are kind of like, yeah, this too, but it's not as important as the top. If I'm wrong or if you've got you know proof to say otherwise, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, and then his internal score was 268, which is, uh, it's so-so, right? But what I would say is overall, more transactional history with Navy Fed. That's really what they're trying to say here. And so that is money market accounts, that is, you know, the different uh, savings accounts and termed accounts that you can do with them. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a lot. It can be five, 10, 15 bucks, work it up, set up auto ACHs, you know, $5 a month to add to that, you know, work it up to $50, $100 each. You know, again, it's more about the transactional history, get direct deposits flowing and uh, a pledge loan would probably help as well and come back and then you'll probably get a completely different result. We've showed uh, a ton of different Navy Fed case studies now. So I wanted to show you this because this is different. This is a denial and how do we actually work towards um, turning that denial into an approval later. So let's get back to work, get those things instituted and, and put them into place and then come back in you know three months or so and you'll probably get a completely different result. Anyways, if you've got some Navy Fed data points you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you wanna be featured on the channel, then uh, reach out to us, comment below, I'll get in touch with you and we can feature you as well. You wanna share your social media, et cetera, et cetera. I don't really care. It's more about sharing the story so that other people can, uh, this can help them get their game plan together for how they wanna treat and uh, handle Navy Fed. In this video, we're gonna go through another Navy Fed Credit Union journey, a case study, as you will. It's been a while since we did one of these. We have an entire playlist now with, I don't even know how many, probably over 10 videos now that we've shot specifically showing people's journeys. And the whole point of this is to show what they did, the different pieces that they used, what the internal score looked like, and then the outcome, the result, which is the big banger credit cards that they got, or sometimes not getting banger credit cards, right? So all this is uh, hopefully gonna do is help you make a better plan, right? Make a better roadmap for yourself with your next app spree, or really how you wanna treat your relationship with Navy Federal, because this is an institution I think you can, you really sink your teeth into and set yourself up for, you know, a longer term uh, goal, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years, right? This is an institution that I think you can do that with. Right? So anyways, let's dive in. Shout out to this video sponsor, us. <laughs> yes, that's right. We recently launched our Credit Mastermind. If you want to get uh, your first 100K in credit or your next 100K in credit, this might be the way that you can uh, level up, right? So this is a dedicated group where that is our sole intention for the next 12 months. After that, it is all about uh, getting new streams of revenue established. So figuring out how to get cash off those cards, turn that cash into streams of revenue, uh, more money, and essentially, uh, collecting and acquiring assets, right? So if this is something that uh, you wanna do, this is where you wanna take the game next, this might be something that you're interested in. Link right here or down in the description below. Again, that's the Credit Mastermind. Now, let's get back to the video. This is really well documented. I didn't do this, so shout out to Michael for doing this. Thank you so much for providing this information. So hopefully you guys can benefit from it watching, yeah? All right, so started off on September 29th with a $5 membership, then uh, sat until October 5th did an everyday checking account, funded $200. The uh, everyday checking account number two, so two accounts were set up, put $1,000 into that. And then a shared savings funded that with 13,500, which is big. I don't think I've seen anyone do this out of the gates, okay? Uh, next, the sixth, the very next day, Save first certificate. There is save first, easy first, and I think a money market. So there's all different types of accounts that you can create in Navy Fed. Now, all, all you have to do is after you've logged in to the top and it says open an account, you go down there and then you can go to all the sub pages and pick out what you wanna do and, uh, and create these new accounts, right? And you pay attention to the terms because you get to pick the terms and how, you know, how long you want it to be. Same thing with the pledge loan, right? So anyways, let's get back into it. Save first certificate. $500 three month term. 
Easy Start Certificate. I've got a couple of those. Uh, $500 six month term, share certificate, $1,000 12 month term, and then finally dropped a banger, did a pledge loan for $4,000 12 month term. Okay, next on the 8th, did another pledge loan for $2,000 six month term. So he was, he was speed running this thing. Uh, definitely speed running this thing because we're like three days. <laughs> okay, on the 9th, he went and uh, applied for the cash rewards, which is probably one of the better cards to start with if you're going to try and get that first card. Now, again, everyone's different. Sometimes people go right into a flagship card. They've got flagship checking accounts set up and everything just works out perfectly for, for you. But I think that if you're unsure, if you've got like lower than a 720, if you've got a thinner file, I think your lower hanging fruit is the cash rewards, right? And I'm standing by that until proven otherwise. Okay, so here's a proof for 12,400, which is awesome. Congratulations, Michael. And uh, internal score was 310. We're gonna show that in just a second. And TransUnion was 698. So again, like, I like his strategy here. I, I would have done pretty similar. I probably wouldn't have done the same amounts, um, but he definitely was leaving like, he was saying, look, I'm gonna put it all out there. And I think he did a great job of that. So I, I think that credit limit is well well uh, deserved, right? And then 1012, we've got uh, money market savings. He funded it with 2,500. And then on the 26th, he did a product change from the everyday checking to the flagship checking. So he's getting himself set up for that flagship credit card, which is a minimum of $5,000. So that's great. And then the last addition is on the 3rd of November, which isn't on here, but he told me is that he, uh, he started doing direct deposit because everything you see on here that he did, he didn't have direct deposit. Anyways, take a snapshot of this and then we're gonna move on. All right, let's cover this. The internal score, which this is a debate that will happen and it'll rage on until the end of time, I can assure you, right? The internal score doesn't matter. The internal score is only a snapshot. It's only done the first time. It's only done one time. It doesn't matter for all credit products. It, do, it only matters for your first credit product, right? That's the, those are the arguments that are out there. And it doesn't help that literally on the response uh, from them, whether this is uh, in the secured message area or if you get it printed on the back of uh, one of your letters, it says the same thing. So this is really weird too, by the way. Custom scores are not something we keep on file or is ever updated. That doesn't make sense, guys. Uh, you probably need to reword that because you're massively denying and playing down the internal score. If this was true, how would you even know it was 310 if you don't actually keep it on file? And then secondly is how can my score go up and down again if it's not something you keep on file or it's never updated. So if it's never updated, how come it's updated? <laughs> so anyways, I'm, I'm not trying to pick apart Navy Fed. I just think you guys should probably reword this because this actually does fuel a lot of the debate. Like they even say themselves that they don't keep it on file or it's ever updated, but that's a massive contradiction to literally them being able to print you out an internal score and tell you what it is and date it as of 10-9, <laughs> isn't it? So anyways, I think that's a bit silly, but I digress. All right, here is the approval, 12,417. 0.24%, congratulations, that's epic. Uh, here's what that looks like again, and I think that's it, right? Oh, here's a look at, um, I know it's Credit Karma, and it's not super accurate, but um, here's what Credit Karma was looking like on the day, and yeah, that's it. So anyways, shout out to you, Michael, congratulations. Hopefully you guys watching this uh, learned something, or this helps you better you know, make your plan of attack with Navy Federal. Today, I've got a bit of a cautionary tale, so we're gonna be talking about Navy Fed Credit Union, and some of the things that have been going around over the last 12 months with uh, certain YouTubers, and essentially downright fraud. So this actually is kind of old news. So this went off maybe late November and basically says in one of these groups, just a heads up, starting overnight last night and continuing through next week, Navy Fed is shutting down over 100,000 accounts that obtained a membership by using someone else's access code that did not get into the credit union properly. Now, we didn't talk about this on the channel, we could have, but there is ways around the normal rules. This is normal for most institutions actually, but I'm not gonna go publicizing that because that's a, I don't know, that takes away from everyone else that's already getting into the credit union in a legitimate way. And that's not really something that I think should be broadcasted, right? Anyways, I know a ton of channels that did though. Um, not only that, but there's a lot of channels that were talking about these little hustles, these come ups, these, uh, these tricks, these hacks, and actually it was fraud. So you just, you gotta be careful who you listen to on YouTube because there's a ton of credit channels now, a ton of finance channels, and you know, it might sound good and it's not like they're gonna come out and say, they're not just gonna come out and just say, hey, this is actually fraud, you could go to jail for this, but 
if you want to do it anyway, here it is. No, they're never going to say that. So they're just going to say, hey, man, I got this I got this trick or this tip to get in here and use this auto loan as a personal loan, right? How many of you watch videos and, and saw channels like that um, or other means and ways to reallocate a certain loan type and use it for something completely entirely different? So some of that stuff uh, and some of the, th the things that uh, is discussed on these channels is just downright fraud and you could get in a lot of trouble for that. So you want to be careful who you follow and what you're listening to, right, uh, on YouTube. YouTube is an amazing resource. There's a ton of epic information on here. That being said, there's also a lot of not so great information, right? So because Navy Fed has become known as the home of high limit credit cards and easy financing, they've been a target for influencers teaching how to basically commit fraud on auto loans and personal loans, and they are performing a company-wide crackdown. Navy Fed itself is doing just fine. Here we are over at uh, depositaccounts.com, and they are still the number one bank. I don't know how often this, this data is uh, updated. Well, it'll tell you right here, actually, quarter two. So as of quarter two, they're still doing, you know, this is the, the data that we showed in our previous video, um, but I assume nothing's really changed. They haven't had any large or significant changes in recent periods uh, to their balance sheets. So again, I think they're fine. I think this is actually a really good thing because I love Navy Fed. I think it's an excellent credit union. And I do believe that it is the number one credit union in the world, even if it wasn't showing this on this ranking site. And a lot of people getting in there with the intention to, you know, run these cards and then try and get all the cash off of them. And then who cares if, if uh, they get the card closed or they get, uh, you know, a cut on their credit limit or any of these things because these are just either uneducated people or people that are downright treating this like free money and or trying to fraud the system. So um, yeah, I, I think overall this is a good thing. And so the, the last piece of evidence that we've got here that um, you know they're trying to kind of steer people back into the right direction is uh, they, they uploaded a video, and this was two weeks ago, on the Navy Federal uh, Credit Union account, which they've only got 10,000 subscribers, almost 11,000. Let's go show them some love. Go and subscribe over there. Um, I'm on a different browser, which is why my subscribe button is still black, by the way. Um, I have su subscribed as well. But uh, yeah, subscribe. And then it says, we know that it starts off, the video starts off, membership, tricks, tips, and hacks. So yes, I think I'm, it's safe to assume they know what's going on. We know there's a lot of folks out there online sharing tips, tricks, and hacks for how to become a Navy Federal member, but actually we'd love to tell you ourselves, <laughs> AKA, please stop listening to these people who might actually be lying to you or telling you, hey, I know this secret way to like pretend like you're a roommate, but you're not really, or lie about um, people being in the service, which I think is the, the, one of the most awful things you could do. And because of this, you can get in and get a membership, right? So yes, probably best to go straight to the horse's mouth on this one and uh, and learn and understand exactly what you gotta do. But yeah, so anyways, this video is on the channel from two weeks ago. Go give them a subscribe as well. But yeah, I think overall, this is a good thing for Navy Federal to do. They are gonna always be the target because they're the number one bank and they have to ensure that their balance sheets stay clean. And uh, by getting a lot of these people out of the, the system, off the platform, uh, that will allow them to continue to do that. So anyways, if there is other news outside of this that I've somehow missed or something you'd like to add, I'd love to hear from me in the comments below. That's it for this video. See you, my friends. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet. Right there. Okay, bye.